today. We'll uh, continue with our discussion. I thought we had some very good discussion. We got through three of the, the six items. Um, Let me, uh, is that thing, can you put the flag up there? Trying to get the computer on. Well, let me start making that with a little prayer. Y'all ready? Uh, Heavenly Father, we just ask that you be with us today. Uh, we have a lot of information, a lot of decisions to make to lead our city forward, and we just ask that you be with us today. And, and for all of us to be ever mindful of doing those things that would be pleasing to thee. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. And if you get the flag on that, we'll stop them to the place of allegiance. Yeah. Let me pull it up right here. Huh? Or sure you can. <laughs> Yeah, let's uh, do and do that. We can put that put that there where everybody can see it, and then we'll do the pledge. You <coughs> need to tell Jeff he's flying and he's coming. Here we go. Oh, yeah, right here. Um, let's Yo, pledge the Yo. Um, Is this live? Wow. Um, Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I feel better, don't you? Yes. Okay. Um, so yesterday we got through three of our uh, six initial uh, goals. Uh, that we're trying to set for our upcoming year. And uh, you know, I'm going to make sure, and you know, while these are um, these are goals we're establishing, I want to make sure that everybody understands, you know, this, this is a working document. I think at any time we can go back and revisit these, add to them, take some stuff off, uh, whatever it may be. Uh, but this is the, initially, I guess, what we're establishing as the, the charting course for direction over the next several years. So. Uh, if any point or any time that we need to come back and revisit these, and I, I think it would be prudent for us to do that every year at the retreat, uh, most certainly. Uh, but m more so if we need to do it uh, uh, more frequently than that, we certainly can do that. And it would be my intent as, as uh, we draft these goals and complete them and adopt them that uh, periodically throughout the year, um, I would give you various updates as to progress updates as to where we are on the goals. And uh, also, um, you know, what I would like to do is start having staff tie uh, the, the action items that they bring to you for action by the board or whatever uh, to these goals so that you will be able to tell real time as we're bringing items to you that these goals are being uh, uh, looked at by staff and we're addressing items by uh, the specific goals that you've listed. Some of them may actually cover multiple goals, uh, especially when it comes to the financial and and any of the other things such as public safety or infrastructure, whatever they may be. So um, obviously, as you know, we've got uh, three other goals to go through today. Um, and uh, so at this point, I'll turn it back over to Chris and uh, let Chris uh, start facilitating uh, the last three goals um, and uh, the objectives underneath. Good morning. Good morning. <coughs> We're ready to go? Yeah, fired up. Fired up? <coughs> All right. Uh, any revelations last night? on the three that we've already discussed. Anything like, oh my gosh, I wish I would have said this yesterday. No. Nope. Yeah, I stayed awake thinking about them all night long. <laughs> but no no new no new content. Anybody else have any new content for, on the three that we already discussed? All right. As Mark mentioned, it's a living document, so you'll have an opportunity to but just sometimes when you go to sleep you get this thing that you in the middle of the night. All right, so we're gonna get to the other three uh, goals first thing this morning. And Let's see, we've got fiscal infrastructure and what was the third one? Uh, economic development. Let's start with economic development. That ought to be that ought to be getting everybody going this morning and awake. So um, kind of like we did yesterday, let's just go back to the original list. That's what they submitted. This is what you submitted. Uh, redevelopment commission, affordable housing. So now I'm going to go back to the other to see if all these are represented, or do you need to start doing them one by one? We um, did not get to the kind of straw man objectives for that category, okay. so we're going to have to put them together. You want to copy and paste them over real quick? No, we don't have to jump into the documents. So just the initiative? Yeah, just to make a of them, put them below so we're not going to go between two documents to be easier to view. Yeah. I think we got it there. Right, so um, what we what we'll try to 
do is take the things in red and move them up into the, the black as real uh, objectives. Um, so it looks like the, let's start with the redevelopment commission because I know that the scroll up a little bit. Sure. In the name of the promote economic and redevelopment housing and commercial areas. So redevelopment commission, who wants to talk a little bit about what the vision is for that? I guess that's my baby. It's your baby? Well, yeah. two people said, so there's it another is person. It is a mayor. I think the mayor's with me on okay, that. Okay, the mayor's. A of, you know, a couple of us, I think. Um, Alderman uh, Harrison, Alderman uh, Best over there, because our, our three wards kind of all connect in the area that we would want to do that. And I guess the vision is that for so long, this has been an area that has been talked about but nothing done and I, I get it. I understand <coughs> probably 25 years ago I talked to Mr. Hartman who was the previous city manager and he said the reason they didn't do anything is because it didn't yield anything. I'm just, you know, but, you know, and so their resources were put in places like Greenbrier which was a development, a warehouse of development, and then out towards Taberna and those areas because they would yield higher property values more tax base. Um, this is an area that's been blighted and needs attention. And it's going to take a lot on our part, and it's not going to happen overnight, but it's going to happen one block at a time. So the objective for this would be what? What would it start to up, sound like? Okay, well, in a redevelopment commission, there's more options <coughs> that the city would have versus us doing it as the planning department, development department, or something, something else, because we can't and correct me if I'm wrong, we can't tell somebody, if we sell a piece of property, we can't determine, we can't determine how that's used. Am I correct? So we can't say, you can buy this piece of property, but you must build a house, and you must put apartments or something like that. The development commission will get more flexibility. Yep. Right. So. So, so, but is the objective to redevelop a specific area of mm, town, correct. or is it to redevelop any area of town. Yeah, specific. Does everybody agree with that? Okay, so so the objective can really focus on whatever, what's the name of this area called? Well, well, I think it really needs to go from Trek Court, because it includes the housing from Trek Court through Five Points to Duffy Field. Why don't so we call it the Choice Neighborhoods Initiative? Very good. That's it. You're absolutely right. The okay, so the objective starts to look like something along the Choice Neighborhood Redevelopment effort or something to that. And what do you want to accomplish in that area? What's the goal? Affordable housing? Well, we're, I, no, I think it needs to be redevelopment and um, that uh, redevelopment that would include affordable housing, um, I don't want to say commercial, but commercial business, corridor. Yeah, commercial yeah. corridor, yeah, that would be the five points area would be the commercial corridor. Oh, help me, I'm fuzzy this morning. <laughs> so, Redevelopment Commission is one of many tools that a government Correct. has in order to do redevelopment of blighted areas. So, would the, it, and it may be the one that we choose, it may be the best one for us as, as an option, but it's not the only one. Um, so, I, my question would be, is the goal, we, we've got our goal, is our objective, one of our objectives to establish the, uh, I guess, best, best use of uh, redevelopment opportunities that are statutorily available within, you know, whatever. And then underneath that may be redevelopment commission. It may be uh, the, the, uh, the other, what's the other one we use, not the, it wouldn't be the, the just straight out where we sell 10 day advertisement. It'd be the other one like we did with the Dunn building where we put it out, you know, for where we were able to uh, acquire some property. I mean, it may be that we just want to acquire some properties and, and, and demos and stuff. That's what we did on 3rd Avenue. If, you're, if, you, if you recall, we used CDBG funds to tear down all of the uh, blotted and, and um, houses that are down 3rd Avenue and realign that road so that we could, you know, improve our infrastructure in that area. Um, and, of course, that's led to the new entranceway in the Stanley Lock Recreation Center right off of that road. It's led to us uh, having uh, Andy's property and being able to have driveway accesses <coughs> off of that into the, the new 80 units that are going on 3rd Avenue for senior housing. 
Um, and so, so Mark, does that sound more like drive redevelopment the place neighborhood initiative using legislatively available tools or something? Yeah, so which like that's what I'm saying. I mean, you know, do you want to restrict yourself just to doing a redevelopment <coughs> commission because that's only one way of how we can do or get where we need to be? Question. Okay. Properties that we have properties that's very small, that's medium and large. How do you determine what's good and bad in that in that area? Meaning, I, I think part of his answer is what uh, Alderman Bingham was talking about earlier about the composition of the Redevelopment Commission board, and if you put the right folks on there. Uh, that that yeah. that answer that, we, that question we have to get step answered. back as the political structure and let I think a re again my vision a redevelopment commission could have the people necessary on there for because sometimes the politics of things don't allow us to, to do what we need to do so the vision is a redevelopment commission that would have architects engineers an so accountant, stakeholders yeah. in the community. Oh, yeah, absolutely, no Urban doubt about plans. it. Stakeholders in the community, but, and then around them, a group of ex officios because we've got 18 people, <coughs> such as the Duffyfield Residence Council, the, um, the some of the sorority, some of these other organizations, yes, that would need to have a seat at the table, but we need the core to be the decision makers. And, you know, Mayor, maybe you can talk a little bit about it because I don't think it's the same thing, but our blighted area 40 years ago, 45 now, God, 50 years ago, was the waterfront in downtown when there was nothing but old fish houses and things like that, and that was considered the blight of Newburn. So they made a redevelopment commission, they put the necessary people on there, and they got a UDAG grant. I don't think they call them UDAG anymore. Well, They're all CDBG now, but yeah, they were, it was a UDAG urban grant. Urban Renewal. Yeah, Urban Renewal. And they took that grant, and they were able to lure, at the time, the Sheraton Hotel to come and build. Unfortunately, they didn't think could they made them build the whole waterfront rather than deep, but that's what they did. And they, 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 the city of Newburn eventually forgave that grant. They, never, they didn't even have to pay it back. They were supposed to take that as a loan and then pay it back. But it spurred the development because what we needed was a hotel to spur development. So that's what that redevelopment commission did. I feel like if, if we establish this redevelopment commission, then they can put all of those, the CNI, because we've got this wonderful plan and wonderful study but it's kind of sitting on the shelf because we only can really pick the low-hanging fruit. We really can't get into the meat of it. I don't think we have the resources and and the staff. I don't know that you have the staff. So there's back to this kind this of public-private partnership, this right? You want to you want to yes. partner with the private entities like architects, banks, investors, so the people who can actually developers who want to take over that area and start redeveloping it's it. It's not a good word. Yeah, takeover is not a good word. Okay. Um, Invest who in the area. Who want to assist? Or in the invest. I mean, they do that to make mm -hmm. money, right? I mean, they're so you got to figure out what's in it for those companies to come in. Right. And so what does the city Mr. Schiff, do? He invested in that piece of property. He's making money off of that through a partnership with the city and giving him amount of funds so that he can make that project happen. So, so is there property in the area that's owned by the city? Yes. Oh yes. Yeah. So is that is that property for sale? Is that a way to raise funding and to pay for this? Yeah, we, we, we gave the board this. Um, we can't put on hold until we form a redevelopment right. commission. Right. Yeah. For any of, um, amount of income that will have an impact right. on our ability to redevelop it. <clears throat> Tax values are pretty low for some of those properties. Right, but I, I, and other cities that I've been associated with, they sometimes will um, give up public property to people to develop. Developers, they give them a really good deal, or Habitat for Humanity, or whoever. A key piece of property, then that just kind of sets the tone for the area, and then everybody else follows. Much like what happened in your waterfront, right? Right. Charity but came in. The city made a our commitment. Key piece, and then boom. Our key piece, just like that Sheridan property, could be the Days Inn property because we're going to eventually own that property, and that could be the key cornerstone piece of potentially us giving it if it'll spur some development. And I, that would help the rest of the neighborhood. And I think it's um, 
it's easier when <coughs> we have all of the properties locked down and we come in and have a sound decision and saying, okay, this developer here, this developer here, that one over here, because the whole, you know, it, it all needs to be developed. So if you have eight different people that want to come in with the idea, it's going to keep getting kicked down the road. So having that commission kind, kind of, kind of put limits on things and you know, motion, movement in motion, however you want to say it. So there are two objectives here, I think. Um, <coughs> one, one is to drive redevelopment of the choice neighborhood, which the city and leaders can do little incremental things to drive that, right? Mm -hmm. But then there's this redevelopment commission also, which I think is a pretty big objective. And it almost feels to me like they're two different things. The, like the redevelopment the commission like may focus yeah. on the choice safer, but what happens, uh, is there another redevelopment commission later that focuses on another area of town that's blighted, right? So do they roll, or do you want to limit your resources just on this one area? I say it limited, but I think that the goal would be to establish, that was the, that's the first thing we need to do, to establish a the redevelopment, redevelopment commission. That's and a very that specific, would, measurable right. objective. I, I, I don't think if other board members agree. Do we want to make that like a, a key objective, or do we want to make it a subset of any, any strong opinions one way or the other? Well, it could be drive though. You can set it up. I hear what everyone is saying. Um, this is something that's been kicked around, talked about, kicked around, and talked about. And you have a lot of people that own property in this in these areas, and you only have maybe two or three percent of ownership that's in that area, and that. Um, It's going to take a lot of work and a lot of doing to make this happen. You have landlords that you can have, like I was talking about the trailer thing. Um, it could be owned by 20 or 30 different people. And um, I understand what everybody's saying, and I don't disagree on that there. It's just that this is a section of town that has always been that way, and uh, no one's never taking a, a, a great interest in it, but every now and then, an interest will come forward, and we're going to do this, we're going to do that, and the nothing. people, they don't do nothing, mm -hmm. and the people that live there, give it up. they've given up so bad that as soon as they get through with a, with a piece of paper, it doesn't matter, because it's not going to happen, because this is something that has always been talked about and talked about. And talk I'm not saying that we're not going to do anything, but I'm just expressing what I have seen all my life. The citizens I, are giving up. There's I think that's the importance of having a, 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 you know, the commission established. They can control that. I mean, they can put restrictions on properties that if Who's you sell they? a piece of property, huh? Who's they? The Who's Redevelopment they? Commission. They can put restrictions on properties but that we can. Once, you, once, you, once we give that up, right? we don't have anything and to do with that. And that's the only downside about it. That, and that's the reason why I'm, I said what I said is there's multiple tools that you have as a board. And, you know, Tyler, Tyler Mulligan with School of Government is probably the best person to talk about the redevelopment. You probably need to have him come in and talk to y'all before you decide on whether you want to do a redevelopment commission, whether Absolutely. you want to do whatever tools that are available to local government to do that. That's the reason why, I mean, I, I don't disagree. At some point, it may mm -hmm. lead to us having a redevelopment commission. I hear you, Mark. I hear you loud and clear, but I'm so sorry. I'm so tired of hearing at some point, because I've been around this for 40 years, and that's all I've ever heard is at some point. We either got to bite the bullet. The problem is nobody wants to give up control. The biggest fight we're going to have is the housing that. authority. They're not going to want to give up control. But if you bring them all together, they've got funds, they've got things that could be part of this. They're going to get rid of Trent Court anyway. We all know that's happening. So if you bring it up under here, you look at the picture. <clears throat> it, it's going to take a lot on our part. We're, there's going to be some grief. But if somebody doesn't stand up and bite the bullet and do it, we're going to kick this can down the road for the next 20 years. And I have dug my feet in. I'll continue to dig my feet in, but we've got to start. So what's and I the would why? be happy. I would be happy for that job to become because the residents that live in those communities they're forgotten. Yeah. I mean, it's been like this for years. The why is because it's time. You know, <laughs> because that to me it's time. 
So is the why the commission, or the why is to redevelop, redevelop this choice area? Right. That is the why. The I would why? think that is the why. That, that is the why. why. So, so the commission is just a tool to Mark's point. Uh -huh. and, and it sounds like you need to, kind of like we need the fire chief to come in and talk about the needs of the fire station. Yeah, and don't bring that somebody. <laughs> <laughs> I think it, guys, I don't want to lose it. It's going to happen. Same thing, we need to bring in the uh, school of government to explain what uh, uh, right. All this commission options. work, how they work, what are the, what are you guys giving up? You know, commission. if you give a lot of authority to a commission, you're giving your authority to them, right? I don't so know if we're giving up anything, to be honest with you. I mean, we, we get a piece of property, somebody wants to buy a piece of property, we sell a piece of property for $1,000. We you can't even do anything about it. I mean, we can't require them to put a house on it, require them to build on it, require, I mean, I, I, I think saw, we give up the ability to kind of control the situation in regards of the citizens that live there. They don't want to feel like some big person is coming in there and changing their community to what we want it to be and not what they want it to be. So if we do do a redevelopment commission, they need to be the number one people at the table helping to make decisions on how they see, not just, oh, you know, we want a Walmart here or we want affordable housing here. That's what the um, reservations in, in my community would something. be. Let me tell you something. I'll tell you like it is, okay? The CNI did that. The CNI went, the input was gotten from the stakeholders in the neighborhood. The problem is, people fight change. You know that what you've seen at Craven Terrace, you've heard all the hubbub, but yet you went in there, you saw with your own eyes that it was a good thing, I've heard you say, and it's okay. But you still got people who are stakeholders telling you you're wrong. Right, right. So this is the reality of this neighborhood. It's not that I'm trying to tell them how to live. They have given us the input. They said they want sidewalks. They want a neighborhood. They want housing that's affordable. We don't even have a housing plan. That would be part of the redevelopment commission. They want to feel safe. They need lights in their street because it's so dark back there. And community centers. <laughs> and community centers. That's exactly right. But they're gonna, there's going to be people that will fight us tooth and nail that have been what I call the heart and soul of those communities for, forever. Mm -hmm. It's just because they don't, it's the change and they're so used to having it the way they <coughs> had it that it's going to be difficult. So, but so in the end, they, remember, excuse me, but if you go to put lights in that area or sidewalks, you don't need a redevelopment commission. Do you? I agree, but I'm just saying it's part of the whole picture. I'm, I'm, no, I'm asking a question. Do you need a redevelopment commission to put lights or sidewalks in that no, area? You no, you don't. No. Right. You shouldn't. So, Maybe. Will lights and sidewalks drive to redevelopment? It'll be part of the redevelopment. I right, think you try it to separate me and we can do some um, lights and streets. Can you do, you can, can you redevelop that. the choice neighborhood area without a commission and put lights and sidewalks in? Will that drive redevelopment? Down? No, because they can have mm -hmm. access to funds and other things. Who's that we A redevelopment commission can have access to tools that we as a city may not be able to have access to. Let me share oh, this. You mean grant funding? Very yeah. restricted. Yeah. Well, you're saying funds. Funds too, they can apply for This may be a little <laughs> off kilter here, but I've been through all my life. I've seen a lot of changes take place. And you're right, a lot of people don't like changes. But every household was operational as a kid growing up. And as the people died away, the older kids left, never come back home. And then the kids that's available now, the generation gap that we have now is so different. So not understanding that nothing is concerning to them, nothing matters to them. Uh, it's now or never. And the concern that they have is zero. The interest that they have is zero. The kids are being put out of school at least 10 kids a day with no parent to go pick them up. And, you know, you, I, I go and talk with them, you know, just like everybody else is doing, and to look to see what can we do to help. They have to have an interest as well to put forward to make this happen. And uh, the ones that I've seen... It's like, I know five kids right now that's been kicked out of kindergarten. I know this week, I know five other kids that's been kicked out of first, second, and third grade. 
Yes, yeah. sir. You get kicked out of kindergarten. I mean, they got kicked out of school <clears throat> for five days. For five the days. parents is nowhere to be found. Yeah. Yes. But yet they have this guy that lives with them. This is all different here. So trying to deal and work with those kind of people to look at what has to be done and how we're going to do this here, it's like taking a needle, throwing it in a haystack, saying, can I go find that? And it's so difficult, you know, that you, we're trying to establish something that how do we know it's going to work dealing with the environment that we have, that we are up against. And that saddens me to see that we have people that around, it's like a 12 year old girl, she went to school this shape, taking a gun and go blah, blah, blah. <laughs> no feelings. But, you know, um, how do we attack this situation? Yeah. You know? Johnny, I, I, think, I think we're on the right track by doing this redevelopment commission because I think that if you have a home, it gives you a it gives you pride of ownership mm -hmm. and will help I mean if, if if a kid has a house that's his mm -hmm. and with a backyard that they can play in, mm -hmm. like you and I had when growing up, mm -hmm. and uh, some of us had it better than others, you had a swimming pool in your backyard. Mm -hmm. But um uh yeah, I, I think this is what it's all about. I mean the, given given a a piece of property to the, the redevelopment commission and giving it to someone that can build a house on it and make a nice home for someone and sell it for a, a, a good price would give maybe the incentive for someone, a, you know, a family to move in and, and, and have a, a sense of pride and sense of ownership. Can, right, can so I'm going to jump, in, I'm gonna jump in here because I think we need to kind of move forward. Yeah. I think clearly you guys want to redevelop this choice neighborhood area. There's an objective here. I think we got it documented well enough for staff to go back and wordsmith it a little bit. We're not deciding whether it's a, a commission. A commission is an option. It sounds like you need to The commission is a how. So when I talked about the why, the how, the what, the commission is a how. That's how you go about transforming and redeveloping the five points area. The five points area is the, the goal. It's the, it's the why. Why do you want to do this? Because we want to remove blight and, and, and redevelop air, uh, blighted areas in our town. Okay. The how is by establishing a redevelopment commission. What do you do when you establish a redevelopment commission? That's where you start the, so that's why I kind of did that yeah. first. No, I think what you've written up there, I, I, can, I can agree with. Any, any, anybody disagree with what's written? No, I just want to comment on something Mark said. I don't like the term when you use remove blighted. To me, that to me that's like, okay, you're removing those people, you know. How about from improve that, blighted areas? <laughs> yeah, okay, okay, improve. Not remove, but improve. Okay. Duly noted. So I, I thought um, the identify all resources <coughs> and tools available is a, is a good goal or an action step to do a bunch of things, not necessarily just choice neighborhoods. So I pulled it out um, into a, its own B, letter B, because it would affect like E and F down below as well. Um, the tools we might have to do public-private partnerships or work with developers in, in all areas of the city, not just the Choice Neighborhoods Initiative. I understand, area. but I think that this whole Choice Neighborhood should be its own it goal. Is. Apart, it is. But I mean, apart from partnering with warehouse, that it to is. me is a separate, it's, it is. it's goal A. Right. It's goal A. <coughs> go no, if you go, go back to the top, go back to the top. A. Goal. Objective A, Objective B, Objective C. So these are independent objectives underneath the goal of redevelopment and economic. I just don't want, I'm, I, I want, because partnering with Warehouse on Craig and West is, will be much easier to do, I think, than the above. And I want to make sure. It's there. That it's there and it's primary. It's there. Okay. And then I think at some point the board will have to decide which of these are priorities, which is a whole other discussion. Right? Does so. that today? We'll see. But if we can't get off of the last three, we won't get to any prioritizations, right? Yes. So I'm trying to pull yeah. us forward. Don't I'm going to take the facilitator. Because this stuff is important. Yeah. I don't know we what got, the last board what, does, but I, I think mean. you guys have stated that redevelopment of this area is important. I think everybody in the room has heard it. So I'm going to take the facilitator and move on. 
because it's documented. We got it. It may not be perfect, and you'll have an opportunity to add to it as we move forward. So let's move on to some of the other. So we've got the redevelopment, identify tools for accomplishing redevelopment commissions, public-private partnerships. Um, establish, let's go to this, let's just establish a net revenue fund. That's one that I kind of, I mean, you know, that's that's a way, that, that's a, that's a uh, how, kind of like a redevelopment commission. What you could do is, is you have, it's, it's kind of a, so our B and it's C a freer way to say a synthetic, synthetic TIF. What you're doing is establishing a net revenue fund so that when you have redevelopment in areas, you set aside so that net a, revenue into a fund and you can use that for But isn't that a tool? Identify all resources and tools? Yeah, I think B is yes. a subset of A. Yeah. Okay. So we can well, take that. But B applies to all areas of the city, not just the Choice Neighborhood Initiative area. Right, that's, why that was yes, that's what I'm concerned. Well, no, it still needs to be there because that's what I was saying, that other neighborhoods still need redevelopment. Right. Does that make sense? Good. These tools can help us do this, and help us do this, and help us do this, I think. So that's why I just pulled it out as its own goal, is to identify all these so that it can help with all the rest of the goal. That's all I was saying. Who is Craven? Who is Craven West? Okay. Oh, okay. 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 So I added it to the list of tools. A net revenue fund might be a tool that you use do these things. All right, what do we mean by marketing the item C? Where did that come from? Didn't know if they wanted some sort of marketing goal associated with economic development, redevelopment. Do we want to market our city? Do we want to meet with? Um, yeah, you probably, I mean, I think you would want to market your city so mm -hmm. big people come in and want to develop like they did with Martin Luther King and we're trying to accomplish with the warehouse of property. I mean, I think that's important for any city to grow. That helps with promote economic development. Why? What's the why behind that? Because if people come in and build, it makes... More tax base. Yes, and, you know, people want to move here. That's tax money that goes and, you know, you pay taxes. You sales tax. Right, sales tax. <clears throat> I think if we have a separate marketing, it should be geared toward the non-retiree market. We've got the retiree market covered with the Absolutely. numerous of retirement destination. If we're going to do anything locally, I think those efforts need to be focused on people that's not retired. Right. So we've got that covered. A phone call this week, Mark, from Kip Paragoy, and he said that the city has paid to have a booth space at with them at retire and that nobody he was trying to get a hold of me. I never did call him back because Cindy was the person. I think Colleen's gone, but nobody's there. So this? A um, couple weeks ago? Yeah, he called this week. Right. I, I guess it was New Jersey. The show is in New Jersey, but are we actually paying to be a part of that? I don't think we should because we have paid as a community. Well, I, let me just say this. We have paid as a community to be in retire, so is that a duplication of, of efforts? Retire does not, well, I'm, I, I, I don't know question. if this is the place to have this discussion, okay. uh, but just, just, so, just so we're clear, Retire, in my opinion, Retire NC promotes all the, all the municipalities. They do not give Newburn any kind of focus. Us sending up a person that may, uh, and, and Colleen could give you a brief on this if you want. I mean, there's a thousand people that come to this thing. Them, we get 125 them. names that stop by our booth. 30 of them want to know about Newburn. If we get 30 of them to visit Newburn, that's sales tax generation. That's possible people we're going to have a sale to. The people from KIPP and all of them say, you know what, we'll sell six houses out of this. Six houses in Carolina Colors at 300 grand a piece is $1.8 million, and we get revenue totally, off of that. Totally it pays agree. for us to send somebody up there. Well, but why don't we coordinate with Kidye, who is sending somebody anyway? And no, they them don't. I called them and asked them the last time when it was in New York, and they said, no, we're not sending anybody. Okay, well, that's where I, I think, think we, we should look at the partner. Yeah. Yeah. Let's put it on the board. board. Yeah. What, 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 let's just put it on this board so we don't lose it. Because we can take them out of the North Carolina booth and put them there, and they've got the tools. I, you know, again, just he's, he's we, correct, we, but we need booth. to put... We don't, we don't do it North Carolina's booth. I understand that, but I'm saying we can take our TDA people out of the North Carolina booth. They don't have to stand there, and they can certainly, because they can represent... The, the whole thing. I'm with, I'm with um, Jeff on the Alderman. fact that if we're going to spend marketing. We got it on the board. Understood. But I'm, I'm responding to what he's saying about the marketing effort, that it should be um, focused 
beyond retirees. Is that was that your statement? So Alderman, can you maybe help with some words on C if you want to to attract a broader demographic other than retirees? <coughs> How about, I think you might offend retirees. I'll not offend them because everything we've done from a marketing perspective up until now has been geared toward them. Right. How about outside the retiree community? So sure. Maybe just a but, well, You're here for the PC correctness, I'm not. So. <laughs> <laughs> you basically want to focus on groups outside the retiree community. And I think that, that captures it. That's the same thing the retiree community. Hopefully to be one of those people soon. <laughs> All right. So we've got the marketing. Focus our local efforts on hospitality, restaurant, retails. Is that? I don't know where that came from. So I'm just waiting for someone to say yes. We want that. I did that. You did that. And everybody agree we want that. When you mean refocus, can you define refocus? Yeah. Well, I think. Right now, we don't have a economic development person in the city. Um, that that position is vacant. So <clears throat> maybe instead of that person going to a retirement, um, like you just talked about in New York and New Jersey, maybe it's something where I've asked before, what are we doing to help sell New Bern? In my opinion, that economic development person should be selling New Bern to your Krispy Kremes. <laughs> The, the places that we have vacancies for. Obviously, Columbia Group has done a lot of that for us. Um, the mayor and I met with them when they brought their um, their real estate folks in a few months ago to talk about basically that. Here's what's going on in Newburgh. Here's why you need to be here. But I don't think we as a board, I mean, we all pretty much have other jobs to do as well. And we need someone focused on that. Um, I think Cindy did a good job at you know, obtaining grants for the Bolt Center and things, that, and attending those retirement shows, but I think we need more of a focus because the, the market's changing, and again, we can't, I don't think we can stake everything on Columbia Developments here, okay, great, now let's stop. We're done. Because I think that's just kind of the beginning, or should be. That makes a couple of questions for me. One, are we going to fill Cindy's position? Is that being advertised, and so we're gonna, we're gonna fill that position. So is it, uh, Jeff, what I'm taking from there, is it, potentially that we need to look to add another position as a salesperson in, in effect, somebody that might be out on the road doing more of that versus somebody writing grant. I mean, maybe she just never had the time because she was so busy writing grants and doing that follow-up, we couldn't get her on the road. So and that may be a priority or goal we need to Let's move at. up one notch above that, right? Okay. So we we'll let the staff decide how they want to achieve the goals that you're setting for them and objectives, right? So the notch above that is what are you trying to market? Newber to be. You know, you're trying to market the you know the young generation to move back here. You're trying to get commercial organizations to come in. You want to land a big automobile manufacturer. I mean, what? The young generation to come back. Why would they? They're going to need a job, right? To come so back. So economic development. What kind of companies are you wanting to, wanting to attract here to create <coughs> a job market? Right. You got a great, beautiful city, right? Uh, it would be a really cool place to come and live. That I have to have a job. Right. So, what kind of commercial organizations do you want to bring into this area that will create job growth? You want IT companies, for example. Look at what Raleigh's done with the uh, Research Triangle Park. Right? They made this huge commitment 20 plus years ago now, and they can't stop. I mean, they have so much growth going on right now they can't keep up because they have this whole IT community that they've done. You know, Charlotte did the banking thing, and now they're into the energy thing. So what's Newburn into, right? Retirees, got it, check. Y'all done a good job on that. Sounds like you're happy with that. So what else are you doing? Well, we, we have C1A, which right. is our countywide economic development organization, which is the local municipalities, and they focus on the industry and the larger type opportunities and employers like you're talking about. I think from a city, it's our job to make sure that when they're able to lure those potential businesses here, and they go around and say, well, where, where are my potential employees going to eat? Where are they going to stay? And there's really nothing there. That's where we as the city need to focus on that and let them the focus amenities. on the bigger picture. We need to work on amenities. And okay. that's what it is. You know, that quality of life that makes a wife say, yeah, I want to move there because I can shop and go out and do different Which things. Which is this D, right? Amenities is actually a <coughs> word. And I just want to capture it inside that 
that be the word of it. Do we have somebody from within the city that works with the CIA with the county? Um, <clears throat> well, Cindy did, but now we, we're going to have to get that person back. Okay. And, and, and keep in mind that, you know, um, call it what you will, uh, but C1A and Timothy and his goal is to land the big fish. I mean, you know, get these Boshes and Moens and that kind of stuff in here. I, I don't know that that should be our, I mean, I, I'd love it if that person comes in that we have internally in the city does that, but, you know, uh, moreover, what is important in, in business oftentimes is developing the small businesses around um, and establishing retail and establishing stuff like that. That's what the, still jobs. That's what the, the restaurants need, you know, they need people here and they, they kind of live off of each other. You know, the restaurants have to have people, people have to have places to go <coughs> or else we lose it. We have, you know, 200 some million dollars worth of leakage to neighboring communities. No. So is tourism a big part of your community? No, Absolutely. And, but that's, that's market driven. You know, if the economy's down, people don't travel. This is more of a rhetorical question because I don't want to put staff on the spot, but we've got a $30 million cancer center that's getting ready to be built at the hospital. You know, UNC Healthcare is coming here. I don't, I don't think really people understand the magnitude of what that's going to be for Newburn. So the whole New School of Art corridor, we need an economic development person out there selling what's happening at Craven Regional Medical Center, Hotel, Carolina Hotel, East, restaurant. hotels, restaurants, everything, that whole New School of Art corridor is essentially going to redevelop on itself. And we need to be out there okay. on the forefront making sure that we're getting things here that we won't need yet. Such as that person could be going to a piece of property that looks like it's underdeveloped or underused like and saying would you, cons would you consider selling uh, you know what's your right. and it's having an inventory right so we're trying to do downtown is just have that inventory so we know what's there right. what would is that a person or is that a is that a why is this a this sounds like you just uncovered uh, another objective to develop this new corridors that we call oh, i mean i, I capture that in my refocus efforts on development of corridors and gateways into our city okay I was going to put under number E. You want under D? Well, I think you. I think you're going to have to focus on this. Yeah, this hospital corridor. I mean, you may want to call that the mm -hmm. yeah, Boulevard corridor. Well, we, well, we, we're. I think that hospital corridor sounds good because it could be in that whole area. Yeah, or that where that old Eckerd's been sitting empty yes. for how many years? Twenty yes. years now. It's been empty. That and could be the, a, the a potential hotel, redevelopment motel. site for a hotel. Right. You know, and I don't know. The, well, the motel. Palace in across hey, the street. I have my wedding shower there. Don't be talking about the palace. <laughs> <Sabrina. laughs> hey, that was the place. The that was the place to be back in the day. Wow, <laughs> that was the only place. Look at the times. <laughs> <laughs> There's a little bit of overlap between those two. We'll sort it out. And he understands what that hospital is going to do. He's, yes, he's remodeling. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ain't no remodeling. We'll sort it out. So, yeah, you okay, got man. These two. We a little bit of overlap. Look, we can clean that up uh, offline. Is there anything below that? Yeah. Well, just there. Um, <laughs> I think we covered all of there. Yeah, did we capture all of these? <laughs> the Broad Street Corridor, the same as the It's one? the Choice Neighborhood choice Initiative. Neighborhood. This is the Choice Neighborhood Initiative. Um, I grabbed these and put them up as D and E. All right, so we, we can delete all the red. Yep. We've got it in there now. Yep. Pretty, pretty good list. Does anybody have anything in addition they want to add to this economic development section? Uh, I think it's a separate discussion, but in any redevelopment school system and the relationship between the county and the city and schools, charter schools, private schools, public schools, uh, there, there's a new, uh, Mark and I are attending monthly meetings. Uh, Obviously, the, the school board has some new vision as to uh, a culture change probably within the school system, mm -hmm. uh, how that's going to impact our city. Uh, it's the first thing, being in real estate for 40 years, people ask about is the school system. Mm -hmm. uh, people thinking about moving to New Newburn, that's a very important thing is, is the school system, particularly Cherry Point. So I don't know if that sir. plays into the redevelopment, but it, it well, certainly does. Well, I think does. it does, Mr. Mayor. And I was kind of thinking in my head, and maybe you guys have this, and I'm just not aware of it, but is there some kind of master plan that kind of says, here's how we're going to focus the city assets yeah. and resources against these things? 
No, I mean, we're just, uh, you know, need some kind of plan that says, hey, we're going to, because then you got to partner with the school system because you guys don't control the county run schools, right? But to your point, that's going to drive you. If there's no good schools here, nobody's going to move here. I mean, need to build like more schools than we need to break down the, the system. So, it, it, I mean, I agree with the mayor saying we definitely do need to, you know, kind of nature. How can we get schools, or is, or is there a need for a whole separate objective no, around developing really a, kind it's of a probably, city plan? You know, enhance the relate or continue to grow the relationship with, with the, county. the county and the school school board because we have there's a potential to work with them you know as far as that phase in property i think that's also <coughs> an, and that would be some way that again we could partner would that be a, a separate goal though i thought we covered um, education that in itself but education is so tied into to redevelopment that was and yeah I, I, there may even be two here there may be and, and staff can kind of think through this but clearly there's something associated with school and education and then I think, I think, to me, they're still missing this kind of umbrella that says we as a board want to focus on these five things. And you kind of have listed them here, but I think there needs to be kind of a plan, a strategy, an approach. You're going to hire an economic development resource that works in the city. What are you going to have them go do? Do you want them to go meet with the school? Do you want them to go meet with the choice neighborhood thing? You want to set, I mean, you need to be able to give them some very specific directions. That's kind of what you're trying to do is establish a plan here on priorities for staff to go focus on, right? That's the whole reason why we're together. So what, what's missing to me here is kind of the plan for economic development. There's no plan. It's just a bunch of projects. Yeah. That's what we, I thought we were trying to do with this retreat is trying to work towards some kind of strategic plan because as far as I'm concerned, this is the most important bullet point that we will work on because this is what grows our tax base. This is where we make our money. Yeah, I don't know how you guys want to capture this, but I think maybe it, when, once you write these objectives, it becomes clear that this is the plan, or is there a separate plan? And I, I'm not sure the answer. So maybe just capture question mark how to incorporate, you know, economic development plan and strategy into the goals. And it may maybe when you write these out in detail, it'll become clear what the plan is. Uh, it's not it's not clear to me right now whether it's a separate bullet or if it just needs to be incorporated when you write it down. Okay. The entire city. Okay. There's, there's yeah. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. Um, Jeff brought up an excellent point about the hospital and the growth of the hospital and the growth around that area. But there's one more thing that we have, and I'm not sure it might be underneath the recreation department or what, but Newburn has miles of beautiful waterfront that maybe we need to try to somehow or another uh, promote that a little better. Uh, some of the best fishing anywhere in, in eastern North Carolina is right here. You know, some of the best sailboating, power boating, and all that, you know, is right here. And, and I don't know, do we properly promote New Bern's waterfront? I would imagine that might be something under number C, because it's, it's another way to attract a different demographic. A different demographic of folks. Again, I think it's unfortunate, but we have so many things going on there that you don't, we maybe not here, but tourism, TDA, we actually have a waterway guide, mm -hmm. and we are constantly out there looking for fishing tournaments and other things that we can bring to this area. Bass, you know, we used to do that bass fishing. The problem is we have an issue with our tails. We don't have enough where we need them to be at a price that they need them to be. So those are the issues that maybe we can look at, but we do, that's the biggest push tourism does is our water, because we real, we recognize the value of our water. Um, our logo, our branding, why do you think the two blue lines were in there? That represents the water, because when we did the focus groups, the biggest thing people said, they, they didn't know we were Swiss, they didn't know the bear, but they knew we were on the war. So, that's what's the gym. Okay. All right, so I think, I think we have a pretty good, we're feeling like we're ready to kind of say this is directionally correct. Yes. Anything anybody wants to add? Going once, going twice. Four done. Now we're gonna get to two more. <coughs> Anybody have a strong preference? Let's say financial for last. Let's do invest in, where, where are we investing in the <coughs> Okay. I think, are those things Those were the initial submissions. Are those already on the other, you want to copy paste in the area over there? I think they're already over there. Um, yeah. 
we again we didn't really get to the detail on this one. We I, we t started we, talking about the streets. Go let's do it. Like we did last time. We just copy paste the yeah. Okay. So that and, and I want to be clear too. Whenever y'all were mentioning, and it was listed three times, improved sewer and drainage. I would imagine that you're meaning storm sewer, mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. sanitary sewer. Right. Okay. Just want to make sure we're clear on. Okay, well, we've got, let's let's move this uh, improved sewer and drainage up to the top because we've got three people that said they want to so. Why don't you add where it's storm in there? Yeah. <clears throat> At some point, um, Mark, I would like to have a update or something on the capacity. Do we have more room for growth on our sanitary sewer and where we're looking at that? Because I know that's our probably most valuable resource that we have and for people to develop anywhere you know in our city outside of our city potentially annexing in is that and I just like to have a little update on where we're at where at at some point. Same with water. Yeah water and sewer. Um, we've got we've got pretty good capacity in our water and sewer plants. Um, yeah, okay. you know, I didn't know where we were depends at. Depends on where the growth up. happens to tell you whether we got enough capacity in the lines or not we, whether we'd have to do most of you know some upgrades on them but uh, it just depends so capacity wise of our plants are good. For a while. Do we also still have? We at one point we had a thing where you couldn't get our water and sewer without annexing That's, it to the city. Is that still in that. place? You fix, fix that you issue. Fix it in that you have it or you don't have it. We do have. We have availability now in the James City area because at that one time they were uh, they had a moratorium on what we could okay. and couldn't do over there. Uh, basically, what we couldn't do. Uh, which was pretty much anything, but that's been lifted now because of some of the improvements we've done to the system um, and fixing some of our uh, uh, inflow and infiltration issues that we okay. have. Well, if you're providing in the James City area water and sewer, are those people required to annex into our city? Any kind of connection to our system is a voluntary annexation situation. Um, I, I, think a, about, remember I think a better um, a, an answer to that is if somebody wants to bring 500 lots into the city we're going to ask them based on department review and everything to come into the city now like the Inslee electric uh, business out on on 70 there was a family dollar store wanted to go in there and we had this little issue and i think that kind of started the discussion that the the board the last board kind of said well even though that's not in the city and even though it would be a satellite uh annexation the the betterment of overall new Bern, uh, being able to provide this this uh, service or product uh, is is for the betterment of, of the Newburn proper that we allow sewer. So that's when we entered that agreement with the county, and they were going to put some capital improvements up so that we could get across Highway 70 and then provide some gravity-fed sewer to that area and 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 at the same time stay off the step system. We we were not going to grow the step system anymore, right? But you did do that. Right. So yeah, now now on the on the highway corridor, if somebody was coming in and get the sewer, I think as a business model, we are we are going to give them that sewer and not not make them uh, be satellite annex as far as the corridor. But if somebody was bring a, a major residential development in, they're going to be they're going to be annexed. We hope they're going to want to be annexed to the city. So for get the people that get that city, get, get all that. They're going to pay double, correct? So they're going to pay double, like Trent Woods does. Well, well, Trent Woods has a graduated yeah, rate, which they're now down to quarter of uh, twenty-five percent. That's what I'm saying. So if we do this, you know, if we're going to allow down that Highway 70 or 70 quarter, or because I agree, you know, you want commercial development, they need water and sewer, but they should pay for it. Our taxpayers should pay for it. They should pay for it. So unless there's a pre-established agreement by the South Side City, we pay double rates. All right, so when we bring us back together, one of the things that comes clear when I was talking about economic development kind of master planning and the comment about you know, capacity on the infrastructure. So if you're going to have these development areas that you want to develop, what's the impact on fire police, schools, sewer, water? Maybe you want to encourage development in areas where you don't have to build new sewer plant, right? In, because if you have to, if you encourage development in one area, but the sewer plant can't handle it, now you got a huge mm -hmm. capital commitment to build a new sewer plant. Right? Sanitizing the marketing. So sanitizing the marketing. So that's where that master plan piece needs to kind of 
look at where you have capacity, where does fire have capacity, where does police have capacity, where does sewer have capacity, and try to come up with kind of this master plan, I think that would be helpful for you guys as leaders to know kind of here's where we want to do development work. But, I mean, I know we don't want to probably speak about it, but I feel like, you know, one option to improve, you know, stormwater is we need to raise the rates. From what I heard, they haven't been raised in years. Okay. That would be A2, I don't know if that's the right word in there, but... Stormwater funding revenues. Stormwater has its own fund, Chris, and it has revenues from a stormwater fee. Um, Currently our stormwater fee is two ten. $2.10 um, per ERU, and um, when, it, when the stormwater fund was established, it was established such that it would be a maintenance-only fund. So there's no real money that's set aside towards capital improvements. However, the board did take some action to do one and a half million dollars worth of improvements, um, utilizing general fund balance uh, approved through the LGC to do so. Um, uh, for some improvements that we needed in, in certain areas of our city uh, where we experienced uh, flooding issues. Um, and so that's been, that's, that's in the works right now, some design work. Um, and uh, um, that's essentially a maintenance only fund is what that is. So it basically pays for just the operations and the personnel to maintain our existing system. We uh, had a discussion with local government commission and last year at the retreat, the board recognized a million and a half dollars worth of capital improvement needs and the board went on record as going forward with that, recognizing there's probably four million dollars worth of capital improvement needs. So we felt like with our present fund balance and our ability to pay as you go um, and, and look, uh, installment loans, we, we could do the one and a half, which we're doing. Uh, the question is, is the two and a half. So, so there's two things there. is capital improvement and, and typical maintenance. Um, that in itself is, a, is a, about a four hour workshop. That, that's a young enterprise fund. It's got some issues within it that probably need to be tweaked. And I need to be convinced along with six other people that productivity wise, we're getting $700,000 worth of stormwater improvement, which I have concerns that we're not. There are many ditches throughout this area based on uh, the regions that we have that different areas of the city are worked at different times of the, of the year. Um, same ditches, uh, pine crest, ditches sitting there have never been touched. So uh, it's not necessarily a forensic audit, but probably a physical bus audit by this board to go out uh, and, and see what you're getting for $700,000, which I'm not convinced you're getting $700,000 worth of ditch cleaning myself. So you're saying that someone came to you and spoke to you about them taking over the maintenance of the stormwater? Go ahead, Mr. Stephen. I'm trying no. to understand what he, what, what the manager said. But what's the $700,000? Where's that That's, that well, that's, that's what I'm the saying. Fund. What, oh, that's why what would you go on. raise a rate and, you, and, oh, and okay. you're asking these questions? I mean, we have to have a lot of discussion before you just go raise a rate 90 cent or two dollars it's this a it's a new fund it's got it, it needs some it needs some help being uh morphed into where it needs to go because i don't think it's there yet how much money is left in that fund then? go ahead sir it's a, it's a balanced fund it's zero i mean zero based kind of uh They're taking sub seven hundred thousand is what it costs us to operate at seven hundred thousand is about what we get out of two dollars and ten cent eru's okay so, so i understand so is there I'm new are you saying that we have this fund and we are we not operating it properly well the, the thing is not being clean based on what we're, what yeah. we're okay well then that's um, more you, of an issue you have right? major culverts uh, we and you can mention some of what we're doing with one half million dollars but you got two issues here you got man and machine clean ditches mm -hmm. manual you know physical repair of ditches and then you have capital needs to correct some really issues right as far as culvert size things like that and so i think that the the vision of the prior board is that the capital improvement end of it is done maybe through the public works through um either pay as you go or uh, installment loan on some of these things and then the, the physical cleaning of the ditches and things is $700,000 that uh, already before you get going, $75,000 of it is is uh, is creatively taken from that fund to run the pump station. Is that not correct? 
So I mean, you know, this is a lot of stuff to get into in a, in a retreat. So but we like have to know about it. We can't well, make decisions. I mean, these are good so things. So don't be raising your rates until you know a little bit more about the whole system and where you want to go, where this board wants to go with it. So it sounds like there's a deep dive needed on the stormwater. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, then, and then is but related to that, it sounds like the fund, the plan. current stump fund at two dollars and ten cents is a maintenance only fund. That's is right. Is there a desire to uh, make that broader so it's maintenance? That's what you want to say about capital. raising rates. You could, you could seemingly rates, say from a sustainability a that the fund is more than two dollars and ten cents. If you if you look at the fact that if you include capital improvement, which the taxpayers effectively are paying the capital improvement end of it, you might have a three dollar fund already and not realize it. But but the general fund is paying for it Part of for it, the capital right. improvement end of it. Well that's that's what I'm concerned about is if we did raise the rates, it's not just we're raising the rate or we have a rate just to maintain just to maintain the rate includes maintenance and capital improvements that need to be done instead of taking and, out of the And the million fund. and a half that you just did in capital is going to require some maintenance. Yeah. And we're going to need to find out the reason why, I reckon, that we're spending $700,000 right. a year and, always have and we still have, how many years we've had this thing now? Um, Probably four. four or five years, whatever. And we still have ditches like you're speaking of out in Pinecrest that's never been touched. Is there a manpower issue? Would be my first question. It's an engineering issue that you're, for starters, you're putting things in that are undersized for future growth, and you're you're approving that stuff, and then 20 years later, part of that one half million dollars is to go in and fix something that's less than 30 years old. It should have been sized properly for future growth, and it wasn't done. And we're we're piping. doing that now. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Ma'am, you talking about piping? Yes. Okay. I.e., the small pipe that went underneath the road out by Max Place that washed out because it was, it was so small it ended up costing us I don't know how much money. So, you know, what you should be doing as the developer when when the engineer study says 18 inch pipe, the, the city should be taking the lead and putting a 30 inch pipe and paying the credit difference between the two for future growth. That's what they do in Jacksonville. Is there a study or something against all the capacity? How, how can a little old guy like me tell a guy with blue ink and he's got an engineer suit that he's right, wrong and I'm right? I'm not an engineer. <laughs> Has, has there been kind of a citywide study against the infrastructure and whether it we I mean, we've got as as we've got some we know we've got certain areas where we know but citywide no uh, is it an H and H is that what would be needed um, yeah I mean you could do that but I mean that through a citywide uh, hydraulic study would be but we know the but, I mean, typical flooding we know areas. the typical areas we know where some of our stuff is underside we do have an inventory on pretty much everything. Uh, the board probably doesn't know that, right? I know I do. I'm a myth that. So right. I, I know that this is what everybody complains about. I think there may be an objective yeah. under the goal of investing in infrastructure. You kind of need to know the current status yeah. of the infrastructure. So like the mayor I said, would like, we need to have a separate meeting. Well, not only that, I would like for maybe, is it Matt's department? I would like for Matt to maybe provide us with a little bit of a memo as to how many miles of ditches we have and how many has been cleaned and stuff at this point. You know, so we can kind of get an idea as to what we have and what's been taken care of. And there's, there's, and a you know, and I, I don't want to, I don't want to to uh, assume what ditch in Pinecrest the mayor's talking about or wherever, but I mean, we had very specific guidelines as to what kind of ditches we were going to maintain and what we did. Um, <laughs> you know, Ditches that uh, ditches that drain DOT roads. Those do, on, on DOT roads, we don't maintain those. Uh, ditches that um, uh, ditches that drain private property that did not involve any kind of drainage involving the city's drainage or coming off of roads of the city. I don't think are qualified for our system. So, I, I, without looking at the map and knowing exactly where you're talking about, Mayor, I wouldn't know, but uh, there are certain ditches in which we established and the board proved that we would not maintain. And we have all of that as well, which everybody needs to be brought up to speed on, obviously. Well, that ditch that runs behind Johnny's place over there that goes underneath Moose Boulevard, I mean, that might be a we do state... Maintain that. Pardon me? We do maintain that. Okay. I'm going to say that might be a state ditch, but the impact certainly has. Well, the pops are the states, but the ditch is maintained by us because okay. it drains that entire community. 
Oh, is that, yeah. that back by, behind there? Which is that community? That? Trolley Run. I mean, what's it called? It's Colony Drive. Colony Drive. Drive. Colony yeah. Drive. But what's back off Elizabeth Avenue? Back. Derby Park. Derby, Derby Park. Park. Derby yeah, Park. that. I, All I mean, that I comes from through people. the. Yeah, out back. It comes on across the New School Park. Right. Yeah, I think, I think the board right? needs kind yeah. of an update on the current state here, of here's, the Here's the problem. You know, if you're in the electric department, you want an extra street light, and GPS says you don't get one. You can electively get an eighteen dollar a month street light. Uh, if you want to have a partnership like on Hancock Street or Pollock Street and put a lot of landscaping and get your sidewalk street done, you can have a partnership with the city. We do that. We've done that. We don't have a partnership. There's this big question about what's private and public water. And so why would the the stormwater fund not similarly for residents all a opportunity that you know it's a private ditch it, it laterally affects 20 neighbors we give them a, a price as a city just like we do on putting an extra street light in for $180 we're going to clean your ditch out we're not going to clean out because it's private property but we will do it for the betterment of 20 residents if somebody in that area wants to come up and get paid and charge $180 we're not doing that but those are the type of things that are left out of the discussion of stormwater which is for the betterment of all Newburn that we just have, we, we, let's, just go, let's just go raise the rate. Well, that's not going to fix it. Well, I think Those I, type I things think I might agree with you on that. Well, I, I, I mean, I, I, you're making too. sense to me. I mean, I mean that makes it, sense. It, we definitely need to have another meeting to really understand that, for me, the unaware thing is going to be a work session on, by itself. Right. We're going to have I want to say, work you know, <laughs> like a four-hour <laughs> meeting before, so we understand because when I hear that we the, the fee is just for maintenance and it ain't being maintained, but we still have so much so much issues with the with the stormwater and we're taking it out of a general fund and general fund we utilize to be able to do different projects. Then right, we're here, we put what, a, a one point five into capital, but then we say we wanna have all of this on our strategic plan, where's the money coming from? But if you had you know, all right. Mayor, hasn't our policy always been there with somebody wants something, the city will work with them just like if you say sure. my sidewalk's broken uh, you pay this, and we'll provide the labor, and you pay. So, well, we, we're, we're not doing it on stormwater. We have that availability in our ordinance to do that. Well, we used to. We used yeah, to do a, something yeah, similar to that. It's if a homeowner wanted the, the ditch covered or something like that, yeah, the, the they would buy the pipe, pipe and the city install. We still do that. We still do that. Okay. But Mr. Mayor, that ditch you was talking about in Pinecrest, uh, we worked on that last week. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's the same ditch, but we worked on about uh, half a mile. Of Ditch, Matt and I, all of yeah. these guys. Mm -hmm. Chris, just one comment. The, the issue that I have with the stormwater fund is it was a new fee that was initiated. It was $2.10. And it was done to protect that funding to make sure that every budget year storm water wasn't neglected, like street resurfacing or training or things like that that typically would get cut out of the budget. However, the tax rate did not go down. So essentially, we raised the taxes or rates, whatever you want to say, on our citizens by about seven hundred thousand dollars. So when we talk about raising that, even if you say we'll go from two ten to, th to three dollars, it's only ninety cent. My constituents were saying, "Well, I didn't see any improvement from when you started charging me two dollars and ten cents. So now, why are you going to sell me that three dollars is going to save the day?" So I think that's something that, again, with this four-hour workshop, especially if their street still floods. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So I think. I'm trying to I'm trying to get in my head how do we start to create some objectives under this goal. Clearly there's some passion and energy, but I don't even know if we have enough information Look. right now because you guys need a review from the team that manages this. Um, do we need to change it also from a maintenance only to maintenance and infrastructure? It's all part of that heat that evaluation. Huh? It's all part of that stormwater heat dot that we need to have a conversation about. Yeah, so let me let me rephrase the question a little bit. So this talks about city infrastructure. Everything we've talked about is stormwater. Is there other city infrastructure? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that you want to have as an objective? Or does this objective need to really just change to stormwater? Well I, there They're were comments on city streets and so Yeah, you want to talk about that? You know, there there's comments on, you know, resurfacing and city street stuff. Um, and one of the first things that I did whenever I came in here as the director of public works was is, is evaluate our entire street system, 
grading it all so that we knew what we were dealing with as far as an inventory. Um, one of the most valuable assets the city owns is its street system when you look at what the asset worth is um, and what it does to your community. Another uh, uh, street rating is being done and performed this year, is that correct? Correct. So to revise that and see where we are. So one of the things that some municipalities will do is they will adopt what is an acceptable street rating overall average that they want to see within their system. And you base that on centerline miles based on the condition of each section of the road or whatever it may be. And you come up with what is that citywide average based on the length of miles at whatever rating, you know, and, and add all that together, come up with what your average is. And then what would it take if it's below that average to bring your average up to that, setting yourself a goal, an obtainable goal as to where you want to be as far as your street rating system. Um, that right now, what we've done is, is we do base it on the street rating system, but we don't necessarily have a goal. We have a, a goal, well, I guess our goal last time was is to, to uh, get as much as we could for our, uh, what was it, two and a half, uh, 2.5 million dollars is what we had. Uh, the, the board gave in addition to whatever our additional money that we allocate each year, which is generally about what our POW bill funds come in at, about 800000 um, to go out and resurface various streets and take care of those. And what we do is we try to objectively do that through uh, the street rating based on the volume of traffic that's on these roads and um, condition of the roads. So there's lots of theories, lots of, of, of discussion on you know, which road gets paved, which road doesn't get paved. A lot of people get very frustrated with that because they live on a house, they live on a street that's got, that may be in rough condition, that may have four houses on it, had not been repaved since 1980, you know, but there's four houses on it and there's other streets within the system that you've got to make some very tough decisions on that may have similar ratings or even a little bit better ratings, but have 5,000 more cars traveling on it a day to be able to transfer our people to and fro from their jobs and everything else. And you've got to make tough decisions like that. So overall, what we're talking about here is in the street rating is trying to determine a way or a methodology of measuring how are we doing with regards to our street rating and what do we need to do to improve that moving forward. And that's kind of why I put the, do we want to maintain a, an average rating? Uh, I'll tell you that uh, I think Pinehurst was one that developed the, you know, we're, we're, we're taking a stand, we're going to set our rating, we want it, we, we want our average city wide street rating to be 80, you know, and that way we can see there's going to be some that are going to be 60, there's some that's going to be 40, there's going to be some that are 100, which is a brand new paved street or, you know, less than five years of a paved street. So that's the things we've got to do. Um, just throwing this out here, <clears throat> what could we say about, you know, a plan because, you know, going through campaigning and going door and door, you hear a lot of people in the community say about their streets and stuff, and I understand the rating system. Is there a way that we can develop a plan where, you know, we keep and maintain at the rate, but also maybe every four years or every two years, we fix a street that may not be, you know, like you said, uh, that it's been 20 years, so, you know, we kind of do a special little project and we have, you know, you got staff makes a decision on, on doing that. But eventually we would like everybody to be able to have, you know, paved streets 20 years, hypothetically speaking, just because they don't have a, a lot of flow of traffic, they still are taxpayers and they still des deserve to come outside and drive on the road that is, you know, at standard rating. I, I mean, it's not a, every, you know, it's not going to be an everyday thing, but, you know, maybe once a year we pick a, 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 a street or something that, you know, we're going to fix this and do what we're doing so that. So, so I have a little knowledge of this at the state level. Mm -hmm. So, because the state maintains a lot of roads, obviously more than the cities do. Um, and it, that's because at one point in North Carolina's history, when the, the cities gave the roads to the state to maintain because they didn't have any money. And now the state's trying to give some of it back, right? But that's why North Carolina became known as the good road state, like in the 50s, because and they gave all the roads to the state. So my, my point is, to your question, the state got into the politics of roads, right? There was this big debate about, you know, the elected officials would lobby that they need a road in their area. And so whoever had the loudest voice got the roads 
built in their areas across the state, and some of the areas that really needed them didn't get roads because they didn't have the right elected official arguing for them, right? Mm -hmm. So what the state did several years ago is create the strategic mobility formula. And it's a formula, a mathematical equation, similar to what I think you're trying to reference, where they, um, they rated the roads and, and they looked at traffic and all the different, there's like five or six variables, and they wrote a formula and it calculates which road gets repaired when. So it took all the politics out of it, and the politicians weren't involved in the process. It was based on need. And um, I think there is a little bit of a dimension. One of the five categories, I think, is some kind of gives the political people a little bit of lever in there where they can kind of have a little say. But for the most part, most of it's based on need. So I don't know if that might be something to incorporate into your, into your statewide rating system and then try to figure out some kind of strategic formula that repairs the road based on the needs not just because someone yelled loudly in one of these meetings about they needed a new road that only serves four people, right? Um, maybe you want to give those roads back to the citizens, right? Make it a private road in the city that doesn't have to be able to So, uh, so I, I just throw that out there from a little bit of experience. That technology exists. It's fairly easy. You might even be able to talk to the people at the DO Department of Transportation. They might even be able to give it to you, right? It was developed by SAS. Okay. It's a pretty simple formula. So it might be some, a tool that you guys can use <coughs> as you start to look at this. I just throw it out there. This is a very complex topic because people get very emotional about their streets. Yeah. Um, so we got, okay, so we, we're back to long-term infrastructure. We got streets, we got stormwater. Talk a little bit about the FEMA grants and uh, these are mechanisms to fund these other two. It would be. Could be a tool. Potentially, yeah. Are there other, uh, other infrastructures in the city that you want to account for in this bucket? What's the substation? Is that electric water? So uh, electric substation. Yeah, we're. I mean, we've got us. Uh, we we uh, we're going to have to build an electric substation soon, um, but it's already on our capital plan. Uh, it's probably not not needed as a goal and objective. I mean, we could have we could we could bring that under ensure. You know, uh, ensure adequate service to all citizens. I mean, that's really kind of what you're talking about. We're investing city structure to ensure long-term sustainability. I mean, we we have various the capital. Substation funds. out at the industrial park, or is that no, 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 no. This one's uh, actually, I think, it's more down in the James City area. And then we've got the one that's over on Trent Road. I mean, we're running 1970s equipment out of. You know, that's that's how old that sub substation is. Hasn't been replaced since the uh, 60s, 70s models. So. Uh, substation. So, I mean, at some point or another, we've got some investments in our electric uh, infrastructure we've got to do. Which, oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I thought you said that. What is, what is the, uh, is there a substation over there in Ward 5 over in, on the Glenmarie area? Oh, what? Ward 5, Martin Mary. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Good well, and the Custom so Works, yes. Well, I've got that substations or something so okay. it's on the radar. So, let me ask that question while I'm on this. Because I, I see that as a, a, a potential problem down the road, and it's coming. Who who maintains Glen Burnie Road? Depends that, on where on Glen Burnie Road. If you're turning off of Moose Boulevard, there by Burger King, Wendy's, going down towards Hatters. DOT. DOT. Yep. DOT, on, they maintain the road. Okay. Well, we need to do something. Uh, we need to get with DOT or something because. If you go down Glen Burnie Road, all the, it's not just storm water, it's not just uh, rainwater, whatever you want to call it. It is that whole area down there, that whole street on the side where the Martin Marietta mm -hmm. used to be parked is, is contaminated with water. It stands all the time. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's really it'll residue. Always be that way. Uh, every time I've gone down there, it's, it's there. It's, it'll always be that way because okay. it's, it's driven by that lake and the river. So now, there you go. That's going to be a problem for us down the road. Have y'all gone and looked at that river over there? Where Martin Marietta used to be there blasting the field or whatever you want to call it. Have y'all looked at that area? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's going to be a problem for us with over the years with the water, with the rain water coming in that place over. But the other day when we had all the, the rain, you should saw how high that water was in the area. So it's going to start overflowing into over off onto Glen Burnie Road, 
over into that housing development area, it's going to be a problem. So I think that would fall under. But I just want to know. I don't know if that was city or state. Okay. All right. So then. So are there other categories uh, that you guys want, or is this kind of directionally correct? Is there anything missing on here that captured most of your inputs? Going once. Sold. All right. No, not really sold because I'm really it rubs me wrong when I go down Glen Burnie Road. I mm -hmm. see that water. I see that rock quarry over there. And then you talk about putting the Martin area Park over in that same area. You're gonna have the city is gonna have some serious issues over there in that area in years to come. Do and it may not be long. It won't be drains down. You know, from the time. Right, so what we have left is the investment one. I think they normally go down. All right, so we're on to our last one for today, the fiscal. So we'll go back and capture the other ones. Yeah. Guess you take a second clean that up real quick. someone come in to ensure that, you know, th of course you're thinking about electric, electric rates, we've got about eight different electric rates based on whether it's residential, residential load management, residential with all electric load management, you got about four different commercial rates depending on the size of the, the, uh, gener uh, the, size of the uh, uh, service needed, whatever it may be. What, what they're doing is evaluating uh, the applicability of the expense to the service being provided to ensure that the rate being captured by that particular rate class is correct. Now it's a little bit different when you look at water and sewer because those rates are pretty, you know, it's per gallon, it's per, you know, whatever it is. Uh, and we've already done one with water uh, to ensure that uh, our, our uh, capital recovery fees are correct. Uh, and we've met with some of the building group already about that. So. Um, with, with that regard, you know, that's one thing you look at. The other one I think about is, you know, do you want to look at what we're paying for in um, our sanitation and, and leaf and uh, limb collection? Um, right now, we don't have a full cost recovery on that. It's basically covered by the tax rate uh, or subsidized by the tax rate. You have our trash and collection fees, so your curbside commercial residential rate, and then you have your leaf and limb. Uh, we generate a little bit of revenue, as I, I showed you yesterday, from <coughs> the sale of the leaf and lamb mulch, but you don't capture the full cost of doing that. And that may be that, you know, I, I know the board has previously talked about outsourcing those things. So do you start looking at all what our fees and our rates are to ensure that we're being fiscally sound in what we do? Um, because the, the 
rate that we charge for residential sanitation may not be captured what the actual <coughs> cost is to provide that service. So that's what you know, cost of service type of stuff we're looking at. You know, I think what Alderman Odom is kind of talking about is is, is more of a uh, whether that's a utilization study or, or whatever kind of thing or a personnel type uh, deep dive audit audit yeah uh, de departmental audit kind of study to make sure that the, that uh, we're being as efficient and effective as possible with our staffing and, and uh, uh, working to the you know to, to the greatest. It's not something you could direct your department head to do. I mean, Absolutely. you were at Public Works. We directed you to come in there and you looked at the roads, you looked at all this and you kind of said and came back, look, we are not efficient. We need to do this, this, and this. You know, with stormwater, all of that, you made that recommendation. Instead of paying out all these studies, we can go study crazy. You have an effective well, I'm not saying. Head. I'm not saying yeah. hire a consultant and do that. We're saying conduct cost of service studies, you know, to, well, to see and to ensure that and report back to y'all is essentially what it's saying. These are internal resources. It could be, yes, it could be internal. Sometimes when you do internal, I mean, if I'm a department head and I have these relationships with the 10 people that I work with, I'm going to make sure my study's going to come out. I don't want to lose any employees. So sometimes you have to have a another person looking in, you know, so that they're giving that outsider view because, you know, and then as a department head, I, you know, I don't want it to come across hypothetical that I'm not maintaining my department I mean, that's, as If we, we perceive that, that's where she and I would come in. Okay. And she performs that study or I perform that study, depending on the department, and take a look at that because, you know, that's, you're hiring me to make sure that we're as effective and efficient as possible. If I see a department head allowing that to happen, then I got a problem with the department head. Right. If department head sees that he's got stuff going on down at his level, then he needs to address it. That's really what what needs to happen. Yeah, I think at some point you have to have a, there has to be a certain level the board has to trust the leadership, and then the leadership has to trust their staff. And if that trust isn't there and people aren't running their operations efficiently, then the board needs to get rid of Mark, or Mark needs to get rid of his staff, or something. Right? So it, 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 we. You guys have so many things you want to accomplish, micromanaging the staff on whether they're keeping their staff efficient is probably not one that you need to spend a lot of time on unless you think there's a problem. Now, if you have evidence or a reason to believe there's a problem, then that should be an objective to evaluate that with an outside party. State auditor does that kind of work. So, I mean, if you think there's a problem where staff's not being efficient, but, and I can't comment on because I don't live here, so y'all have a better sense of looking at the budget and and such, but um, so if someone wants to put that down as an objective, we can, but or if we want to trust Mark and his team to get done. I think it's the job of the city manager yeah. and, and the department head. Okay. okay, so we're going to, Mark's going to do this and get report back, identify areas to pursue alternative funding resources. So what does that mean? Can you put that up there? Or can someone speak to that? Well, I mean, I probably put something in, I don't remember exactly what, but again, back on cemeteries, I mean, a, a need with their business model with somebody out there that really just making a profit. And part of that is urban gardens, or uh, urn gardens and things like that, that we're not looking at and thinking about because we're actually not thinking about growing the revenues, uh, which in turn, we could put that money back we could probably spend two, three hundred thousand dollars on updating our cemeteries. It's uh, it's a bit embarrassing to if you can honor your your dead. I don't know how you can uh, go forward as a city. And we have some tremendous deferred maintenance items in our cemeteries. It's just not fair to the families. Is there a way to look at the revenue? I mean, you separate out the revenue and expenses just for the cemeteries, yep. so we can look we at that. that and I think out. the urban thing is a you know a great idea because you know what's happened. The churches are now going into that mm -hmm. business. So you got First Baptist did one, Christ Church, I think St. Mm -hmm. Mary did one. So they're all going for it. So their members now are not buying our cemetery plots. They're going to the churches and, um, yeah. Well, I'm going back the game. Does, does the citizens of New Bern expect the city to be in the cemetery business? Mm -hmm. we, said we have been for it was a shock. 250 I think that, years. I think that really is moving forward. 20, 30, 50 years down the road, if you want to think vision, do we want to be in the cemetery business? Because it is a perpetual maintenance. Mm -hmm. No. I Who would buy? Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. Well, and, and keep in mind, you know, our oldest 
most awesome, you know, revered cemetery, Cedar Grove Cemetery, used to be a church cemetery got turned over to us. Now we can't sell anything out of it, but we have perpetual maintenance of it. Not to mention replacing marble rock whenever if somebody runs over it and because it's starting to erode, we've got to maintain the historic that's integrity of it. For eternity, so well, that's what I'm saying. You're, you're, making, you're, you're keeping this cemetery forever. So is, is the cemetery business really a business that we want to continue to be? Well, I, I think what the, I don't want to speak for them, but I think what the mayor's saying is we're stuck with these things now. Now you've got to find some sort of revenue. I agree. Right. So if, I mean, I agree with you. If we could get out of the cemetery business today, I'd be the first one to vote for it. But Amen. what, what can we do? I mean, I think we're, we're stuck with it. And this is where we can do some research on this. One of the things I've seen other other municipalities do is establish a what I'm going to call a trust fund, and they and basically you put it's going to take some investment in order to get that uh, to get that uh, balance built up to get your capital built up and invest in it. And then what they do is they, the investment income that they get off of that interest, dividends, whatnot, that income is utilized for perpetual maintenance of that. So basically, you don't, your tax dollars aren't covering it. Your tax dollars may be required to get that initial investment up. But you can utilize that for uh, for as a potential revenue source. Well, some cities are willing to set the rate. But you got to be willing to set the rate, set the rate for what you sell yes. those things to be able to and find that. And have you done a study to see like the opening and the opening fees and stuff? Are we in line with everybody else? No, no. higher, no. lower. Okay, so. Well, so maybe there's two that's things here. There's the evaluate whether you want to be in the cemetery business, and, and if you don't, I heard like three or four. Knows it's the first time I've heard all of y'all agree on one thing. Sure. <laughs> um, then do you want to cut the bleeding, right? So in other words, stop it, stop investing in new plots, and that way you only have to maintain what you've already committed to. Yeah, I don't think you don't have to maintain any new. new pathways. Well, we're just trying to keep. You're still selling. Some point right? the ones we're selling right now is Newman Memorial. Now what we can do, and I think what I hear the mayor saying is, is instead of you know just selling grave, 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 grave find alternative ways that we can utilize our space more efficiently and create opportunities to build urn gardens or, or mausoleum or whatever it may be so that we can pack more people into the limited amount of space we have. Ultimately, that's going to help us with revenue so that we can help maintain our system and stuff like that. We can look at investment options with the trust fund. Thing, that's kind of what and I'm And they're basically right maintenance free. But ultimately, we will not be going looking for another 50 acres to build another cemetery. Oh, no. Right. No, no, absolutely not. Right, and I, some cities make them parks. Like I know in, there's a beautiful cemetery in uh, Macon, Georgia, it's called Rose Hill. Yeah. And they've made it into like a park. And people go have lunch there. It's right in their downtown area. It's a beautiful cemetery. Mm -hmm. Very historic. Wow. Um, so they've kind of well, taken this thing that was a weird well, asset and turned it into something that people can use. And that's kind of what our Cedar Grove Cemetery is, but you know, uh, you run into problems with that too, with people letting the dogs run around and pee all over the place and everything else. So there's not an easy answer. All right, so the objective is. Uh, is to that might be me. I'm going to be hanging with the Joneses. <laughs> look at some uh, creative ways to manage the cemetery. So we'll, you, some of the stuff you just rattled off, Mark, if we could get that into this, maybe not now, but at some point, because I think there was a lot of agreement with what you just said from the board members. Okay. Um, evaluate possible areas to stop or change. Could you service. say with cemetery operations, could you also add in options or in additional revenue, something like that, and options for additional we'll work revenue. on the board yeah. that. Yeah, that's kind of in B. So there's alternative funding, but then there's oh, also I've, do we or don't we want to be in these businesses, and how what might we be able to extricate ourselves or add services or take away services from all areas of the city? I guess you could ask Christ Church if they want it back. <laughs> That's where we got it from, <laughs> right? Didn't they came from And it was during the uh, yellow feet. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let's get down into some of these red items and pull because them up into the appropriate start with fee, maintain or reduce current utility rates, for the rates more user fees when additional funding is required. Can we capture that up here? And it it's fair, and we'll study it fair, or is it something different? <laughs> that as needed you can call to them sure we I mean we do that with 
hurricane preparedness. I mean, the airport does it with Trader to do the runway. I mean, we can have those established. It's just, you know, you, we don't budget for snow. seven <laughs> inches of snow that was, was <laughs> left, every with, which, was, <laughs> with, which was followed by eight degree weather for three different days. I mean, that's stuff that we don't budget for. If the board wants to take action for us to do that, we'll do it. But, we, you know, we can cover that, and then hopefully the board will do an amendment to cover that because of, ultimately that money's got to come from somewhere. But, I mean, we could definitely... We definitely have those things. We have mutual aid agreements whenever we have hurricanes. Okay. We have all kinds of stuff established. Well, I just saw that snow removal, so I didn't know if it was something we needed to do because I certainly would outsource something like that. Yeah. Right there. Generally, mm -hmm. our snowstorms consist of the last storm we had where it snows that day or that night and it's gone by 5 o'clock. Yeah. Yeah. I think we have that one Oh, yeah. Where you have the cemetery landscaping and maintenance, is that all you're just talking about, cemetery landscaping? Because I know at one time the city did outsource our landscaping and mowing to another company and didn't do it that, but it it was ineffective, it was expensive, and we ended up coming Correct. back to our own people. We did yes. it damages. I mean, they tore the place up. Yeah. Well, I'm talking the cemetery they did, but I'm talking about I we used to contract for people just to mow the greenways and different so, things. So Foster like that. and Matt had work, have been working on. I know they transitioned a lot of uh, maintenance of those types of things from. Uh, In-house, we would hire temps every summer. Basically, we moved that money to contractual services and hired a company to come help mow almost everything but the cemeteries and parks. So the, the rights away we do, the greenway over behind the double tree, that strip of grass, right, all that stuff is now under contract to be moved. Um, facilities and, and the cemeteries is what was so outrageously expensive to get them to come maintain that we decided we would try to keep that in house and work with the park staff to, to maintain that. If they're not doing a good enough job, we'll, we'll relook at it. But um, because all that, almost all of it has to be, you know, almost mm -hmm. by hand because you can't get big mowers through there. So um, we'll continue to look at that. But that's kind of the one that we kept. We had out outsourced a lot of the other operations. Please, just so they'll know. About what was a contractor going to charge you to do seed row per cut? You remember what the price is? Uh, it was a lot. I mean, I want to say it's tens unreal. of thousands of dollars. What? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, they spend they spend seven to ten days in there straight. Yeah, that, Wait, yeah, that's for five thousand. I mean, <laughs> you tell them the calls. Yeah, I will. <laughs> I'll guarantee you they go right look at it. They will give you a different price. Not these. Mm -mm. But are they going to yes. tear everything up? No. Though? It has to be done I'm by saying, hand. Has to be done by hand. Right, right. but how do how do we market stuff like this? I mean, there's there's small businesses that we talk about. You know, we want to help. I mean, Matt got quotes from multiple. Had a bid process. Um, wow, that's crazy. All right, so um, I think we got C. So I think we do here. And what about D? I just got a quick question on the snow removal because I was in transit. How um how hard is it to have some sort of um you know contract set up or in the that you know that we budget for just so it's there you know if we do have a really bad snowstorm? Yeah, it's easy for us to did that out. It's just availability of that person and then, and you know on an on call basis we can definitely do that. And that's, that's just merely having uh um, having having the agreement established. Oftentimes we do it with uh, hurricane preparedness. We have contractors set aside. They give us rates per hour. That they plan on being in, in, in search. I mean, that's not. A that we and there's not many. There's not many contractors in this area that's going to have that equipment. You know, they may have front end loaders and bulldozers and road graders, but that you wind up costing more. They cost money. more money because they hit a manhole and they just rip the whole manhole out. It has that rubber end on it, right, Mike? Mm -hmm. I mean, Mark, <laughs> Mike. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it kind of gives when it goes over. The storm that we had, the first storm that we had, is an anomaly. That's a once every eight yeah. to ten year storm that we have. The other ones we have, I mean, <coughs> the storm, the first storm we had froze the Moose River. I've been here seven years and I've heard other people say it hasn't happened since 1980 something or whatever. Well, 89 I mean, is when we had that big snowstorm, but I don't remember the river freezing like we the day It's just not worth the hundreds of thousands of dollars. Of that that All right, I'm going to pull this back together as we're close. A, low rates and taxes. What's, what's that? Uh, I think I, I can understand it, but how does that and fit into an objective? What's the objective? To keep taxes low? Uh, to bring everybody. Nobody wants to spend. We live.
live in a Walmart society that, you know, people buy something and your neighbor says, well, darn, I went to Walmart and I got it for $5. And you go, oh, I can't believe it. So we think everything's got to be Walmart. <laughs> That's the way I look at it. So that is, you know, when we say low rates, you know, is low rate 40 cents, is low rate 50 cents. If you look around the area, we have the lowest tax rate east of I-95, so I believe. Maybe the goal is to you know, continue to have the lowest. Yeah, I'm running in more business. Yeah, I mean, I, I would rather say expand our expand our tax base than I would rather say low rates and taxes or low taxes. What about competitive rates? I say competitive rates. Yeah. <laughs> we are competitive. Who else is even close to us? Nobody. Yeah. I know. I was going to say. Maintain competitive but rates. that it doesn't sound like okay. we're happy, like that. You know that there's no one, but we're still trying to grow at the same time. Or who are, are we still the same benchmarks? Kinston, Elizabeth City, Statesville, are those still our benchmarks? Utah, yeah, we, I mean, we use, I don't just specifically use a, a singular set of benchmarks. I use okay. a lot of different benchmarks depending on, we try to, I try to get as many as possible. I think last time we looked at tax rates in our budget book, um, yeah. what I have there, I think I used about eight different ones. Yeah. It's right the front. I, and I, I put that in my budget message every year. I mean, I show you what our applicable tax rate is to others. Greenville, Goldsboro, Kenston, Washington, Havelock, Wilmington, Wilson. Yeah. Oh, this is this one too. And we, no, 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 uh, uh, we're at the lowest. Well, and the quite, uh, I, I think uh, I when we know. get finished with this, the real question is can you stay the lowest? Because y'all have got a pretty big wish list. Yeah. Thank you, Chris. I appreciate you leading us to that. So, uh, <laughs> I was going to be saying for it. Well, I'm going to be saying Excuse me. When was the last tax rate increase? Oh, Lord. Uh, it's, been a long, it's been a long time. Yeah, it's I been mean, a long 49? time. 49? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, there, was a, there was a rate increase when the budget was drafted for the first, uh, when they were in the financial issues, right? Oh, yeah. oh. We're, we're actually at 46, not 41. Yeah. Well, I had to, I had to draft it that way because we don't realize those revenues until this year. So it was drafted with the 40, so this year we'll show the 46. Um, but we're still woefully, and look at look at the population of Wilmington would be our next closest. And you're only two tenths away, 46 to 48. We could, that's what I'm saying, if we could expand our tax base, then. So it looks like there's one in 07. Well, I'm, that's what I'm saying. 2007 was the last yeah, rate. No, that's what I'm saying. Here, you got more than 10. Yeah. Right, so let's jump back well, to this. Let me say, 2007 was the last rate increase, tax rate increase, that did not coincide with the revaluation re year. All right, so I'm looking at this. Is there any? We did one with Mr. White. I think here. We did not. I'm not sure how you said low rates and taxes is an objective. We, um, I'm open to suggestions. It is a. It's a, more of a philosophy of having principle versus a goal. Right? Yeah. 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 Um, so, what do y'all want to do with that? You want to try to craft an objective out of it? You want to delete it? Uh, I don't know who put it up, but I want to make sure it's accounted mm -hmm. for. How do y'all want to account for it? Did the person say who, why they put it up there? Or why they suggested it? I, I put it up there because I saw the wish list that came. I knew what was coming. <laughs> I mean, I, we can do everything on that list. The only one thing stopping it is raising taxes. So. I don't. I don't agree. I don't agree. I think that it's not our job to figure that out. It's it's staff's job and creative. You you know, you rob Peter to pay Paul sometimes, and I, I believe I, that. But I think our creativity has been exhausted in the last four years. If we tell Mark, Mark, we want to. Bobby, I'll just say, build a fire station. Please don't do that. I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, we want to build a new park. Mark, we want you to go find a million dollars. Mark, in your experience over the last four years, is the money there to go find? It, it's going to be difficult at this point. I mean, we well, might can well, find some, but it's going well, to be much very... Is, how much do you have in reserve? Well, the problem with reserve, Bobby, and I, I get that. The problem with reserve, and everybody looks at that and says, oh, I talked Charles Tyndale during the campaign, and he said, well, you've got all this millions of dollars in there. The issue with that is you can do projects out of that fund, but you can't do Sustain. recurring issues like when you build a fire station, you can build a fire station and pay for it. We might even be able to pay cash for it. 
but every year you've got to pay a million dollars to maintain it, and that's where the issue comes into play. That's the reason the last board, we were able to say, Mark, go find efficiencies, go find some savings, and let's go do this project. Because once that project's done, Powers Point Commons, for example, was it $75,000? So $75,000, is there maintenance? Yeah, there's a little bit of maintenance with cutting the grass. But there's not hundreds of thousands of dollars in recurring maintenance to do those things, and that's why the stuff on this list, a lot of this, when you expand programs and offerings and things of that nature, not just building a building per se, you got to find the revenue. And I, yeah, but I can spin that different on a renovation. Yeah. I could say, um, out of that 75, if they had made that a public private partnership and involved other organizations who would have raised that, you might have only spent 30, half of that, 35 or 37. Five on that and could have taken that other to put someplace else. And so that's what I'm talking about, the creative idea. Then you would have had money to put somewhere else. And I, I want to look at or have staff look at other opportunities where grants, funding, public-private partnerships where we can bring money in from other resources, outsourcing, those kind of things which will free up the money to be used in a different manner. I'm all for it, but I'm curious to who your private partner is going to be right. to increase your stormwater funding. No, those are the areas where you can. That's why you take that money, but some of the other projects you have, you try to get those partners so it frees up that money to move to other places. Well, just, just to clarify on outsourcing, just for the, because I have experience with that, it doesn't necessarily save you any money. Understood. So you but, still have to pay for it. You're just paying you a instead of staff. Maybe you don't have that continuing uh, maintenance and things that you would have to, you know, if you outsource something, you don't have that continual benefits and taxes and stuff for and those employees, that liabilities that you have to take care of. That there might be, might be, but usually the, the, the vendor that's doing that might take the lawn service, mowing the services. Right. That they're going to have to figure out how to pay their employees. Right? Okay. So that they may be able to do it cheaper than city employees, I don't know. I don't want to get in that debate, but but at the end of the day, it's not a huge saving. So just to say we're going to outsource all the services the city provides doesn't mean the city's going to save money. You're still going to have to have taxes to pay for those outsourced providers to do the work. It might save you 10%. I can it might it. not. It might cost you 10% over a period of five years, because usually outsourcers will do it really cheap the first year, and they charge you, they ratchet it up every year. And so five years later, you're paying twice as much as you did with the city worker. So you have to have really good contract people to make sure that that doesn't happen. I, I threw a possible objective up there just for y'all to consider, but if, you know, if we want to take it off, we can. That, that's a little more concrete objective. You could try to maintain lower rates relative to the benchmarks, because that's how we are now, or, or we could... I'd like to just play devil's advocate and state that, you know, for a city to grow, you have to sometimes raise the taxes. I mean, we, me as a consumer, I have to, I know that I'm going to have to pay, you know, to, how, I mean, how can a city fund what we're trying to do without raising taxes and saying to continue to maintain the lowest tax rate? And I know we're politicians, but realistically, you have to spend money to make money and you have to raise the taxes sometimes. I'm not saying a lot, but we still have to raise some sort to have funding to do what we want to do, or this was all a wash. Okay. Yeah. Because you can, you can have public partner partnership, and I believe in that, but you're going to exhaust raise, that too. Raising the taxes one cent generates how much money? $300,000. One penny generates $300,000. That's a lot of money to me. To me. I, it may not be to the city, but a project where we were looking at hypothetically the river walk that on that sheet of paper was five hundred thousand dollars there goes three hundred thousand dollars right there towards that project but i think i think today is where the rubber meets the road because you raise taxes one percent and yeah you've got three hundred thousand dollars now but you give employees one percent merit increase across the living range there it's gone mm -hmm. now you're true. back to square one so i think what i'd like to do is why and say one say this one's close i, I don't know yeah. about Let's, let's decide, do you want this on there or not? Something I have a problem with that. I'm question first before we make them pay low taxes. It's the lowest, I mean, in some way or another. Based on revaluations or group of other cities, I mean, well, the lowest tax rate taxes possible. to be the lowest? Well, I know I've been out of the loop for about three and a half years, but now, to my knowledge, when I left, the reevaluations came in every six years from the county. They're down to four now. They're down to four now. Okay, so when they do their reval, um, then your <coughs> your taxes, your values is going to be higher. So not, then necessarily. Less, not, well, not necessarily. Well, not necessarily. 
it, but I'm just saying it, it, it can happen. We, we had the last valuation that was done. We actually had a 10% across the city drop in values, okay. which is why, which was what resulted in us going from a 41 cent tax rate up to a 46 cent tax rate to just stay flush, just just, just to stay neutral. just to stay revenue neutral. Okay, it was 46 when I left. Okay, but I'm saying. That's every four years, so right. you're going to get possibly you could get a higher value, tax value. So then, in essence, you're going to be paying a higher tax. So that's generating more taxes. But you well, can't expand the tax base too. You, you know, we're going to be bringing in other properties. Exactly. You got developments exactly. building. You got and that whatever. big project out there on Martin Luther King. That's a lot of revenue right there. The, the average, the average annual growth for the city of New Bern during the last revaluation period for that six year period was one and a half percent. Okay. And that when we did our estimates for, for this process, that's generally what we used is one and a half percent growth. Okay. That growth is not value growth because they don't change that value but once every four years. That growth is actually city expansion. Mm -hmm. So the yeah. new the new houses, the new developments, redevelopment, new uh, structures that are were torn down and rebuilt, <coughs> that sort of thing. Plus, I think, Barbara, obviously the board sets the tax rate every year. Right. So, I mean, you have, the board has a choice where, let's just say three years down the road, two years down the road, when the next tax valuation is done, let's say that there's been a 10% valuation growth in the, the city. Well, then the board's going to make a decision, are we going to leave the tax rate at 46 cent, which would bring in more revenue, or are you going to make it revenue neutral so everybody pretty much pays the same tax rate? Or the tax amount, I guess I should say. People will pay more based on what their reevaluation is. They can pay more, they can pay less. Based so on at the end of the day, the, the taxpayer is not going to know the difference between the reevaluations mm -hmm. what caused their. Oh, yes. No, they, they will. They will. will. They will. I think they will. The, the difference is <laughs> if we take in $13.5 million, we got to figure out what the number is to bring in $13.5 million. Now, if we want to bring in $14 million, that changes the number. But like Chris said, the taxpayer is not going to see a big difference because your, your tax rate is revenue neutral. So even though their value went down or up, the tax rate is revenue neutral, so the taxpayer, their tax bill each year is going to be about the same as what it has been. Unless you Unless like you not to change it. <coughs> so, let's take a quick uh, break. All right, so we'll reconvene, if that's all right. <coughs> so, uh, in front of you is the draft of the six uh, goals with the objectives underneath. Again, it's a draft. It needs more work, so don't get too hung up on the wordsmithing. But what I'd like you to do now is take a, a minute or two amongst yourself and circle the five things on these two pages that you think needs to be done. You get five votes. So you can circle it at the goal level. You can circle it at the objective level. I'm not going to dictate where you circle it. But you get five circles, only five. So start to prioritize in your own mind what you think is important by circling five things. Even though there's subsections? Right. Um, you can circle five, yeah. make five circles on the piece of paper at any level of detail you'd like to make them. But you only get five.
like a test. You got to work alone. <laughs> no comparing notes. Wow. This is your individual thoughts. <clears throat> Yes, please lay your pen down when you're completed your uh, assessment. I'll, I'll take them up if you if you are finished. Do I put my name on it? No. I'll just take it. Drop them off. Don't need your name. And go and look at Don't really it. care who said what, but okay. if you're done, let me have it. No. We're going to put them together on one piece of paper and see where we are. See how close we are. <laughs> what, what time would you do? You know what makes it better? If you do it departmental-wise, oh, the departments get together. Like the fire department. The fire department used to have a Christmas party every year. And that, it's just for the firemen because you couldn't afford to bring families. This year they decided not to have that. They're going to have a, a, a family day. Right, you know, they have family day. You know, has got hundreds of billions of dollars, too. You know? You're talking about, you spend $20,000 of taxpayers' money for them to come out and but eat hamburger tax, and hot dogs. But I'm, I'm also a taxpayer, and there's people, I mean, taxpayers want that. Thank you. I think they do. I think they do. I'm having a special. Yeah, well, I'm glad you said that. And, and I, I mean, we sit here cherry picking our money, like, where? Can you pull out the Word document there? Can you pull out the Word document there? Can you pull out the Word document there? I don't want to bring my wife. I mean, it's not, it's, it's for some people, not for everybody. Sure. Yeah. To me, I'm all about These are unmarked ones in case you want to reference them while we're talking. We're trying to get some more printed real quick. Because okay. we're going to start talking about when Chrissy finishes. Hurry up, Chrissy. We have the Price Waterhouse Cooper <laughs> tabulating the votes. The is there people. any collusion? I want to know if there's any collusion. Wait, what happens? Are you making a decision? We have the unaudited yeah. results. I saw, they just, they just voted for me to make the entire decision. Just see where we are. I was side talking. What, what, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? Why does he have what, Bobby? Huh? Um, uh, Aster. What? what are you going to do what? She was asking me, what are you doing, voting? I said, yeah. I said, they just voted to let me make all the decisions. We're going to do a firehouse. 
Right. You got my boat too. <laughs> well, Three, you need one more, honey. <laughs> you want those king size chest people? <laughs> <laughs> you got it. The me and you already got the money in the pocket for mine. So I'll tell you. I'm a hustler. The negotiation begins. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm here for it that's myself. How governance works. I know, I know how to do it. Public partner, private partnership. <laughs> Mine, mine's already paid for. It. I just need the city to maintain the park. I said, yeah. You kidding? No, but for real, why do you have that paper on your own? Three areas. One is 
current initiatives that are underway based on direction from the previous board that we're already working, already spending money on, and kind of already planning. Um, and those things are kind of included in our cost estimate. So those are Oaks Road, Trent Road, Old Airport Road, widening and resurfacing. We put in some dollars for our Mart for Mart Marietta Park for our match for the um, part of the grants and spread that out over the years. Um, we are currently working on $1.5 million of stormwater projects that we have we will finance this year for the following years. Um, the central garage relocation would be moving the central garage from 2nd Avenue or 2nd Street to, um, to the water treatment or the old water resources site on News Boulevard. Um, the river walk completion that we all discussed the other day, um, we've included that as well. And so when we start looking at the numbers, those are currently included. And then if the board initiatives, we pre-populated some of this. So if you assume the item on uh, 2A, improve emergency response times, there's a long list of things we could do to accomplish that. If one of those includes a fire station, if you see at the right, JR has changed that to a yes. So we can look at how that affects the funding profile. And then uh, line 25, public-private investment for redevelopment. We just put a, do a no nominal dollar figure there. We can change that. We can adjust it. We can say we're not going to spend any money on this redevelopment initiative, but that would be the initiative that would be um, 6A. And then we did not include any new projects. We can include them now if you would like. We can create a line and include it if invest in or improve stormwater and drainage capability is a priority and y'all want to just notionally put some dollars to it, we can do that and just see what that does to the funding profile. So, go ahead. So, JR, can you take the yeses off of these and go to the chart, the graph, take, sure. take it off for just a second so they can see the baseline? So what happens if you go to the graph, because I think that's the easiest way for them to digest this, this shows you want to explain the graph because you're probably better at it than me. Essentially what we have here on the graph is the cash is the cash projections, essentially the fund balance projection uh, based on the selected initiatives. As you can see, the top line here would be the amount that we have available. What we've got is from FY uh, actuals from FY15 uh, through an estimate of FY18, and then beyond that, it, uh, it, it's just kind of a projected number. So that the projected numbers from FY19 to FY23 five-year projection, uh, that's what will fluctuate based on what is selected today. And so this is all based on a five-year projection that JR and I did of revenues and expenses for just operating. So revenues that includes the new revenue from the Columbia development, um, just general city growth, that's all included in the revenue projection. And then the expense projection, just general operations, what we're seeing with um, IT contracts go up about 2% a year. We programmed that in. We did program in 2% um, a year towards employees. We can take that out if you'd like. But that's the base. And then if you add on the projects, you can see kind of what that does to the so cash available. So let's go back and click on uh, the fire station as an example and watch what happens to the chart. So we say, yes, I want a fire station, which I haven't said you do, but this is just for exercise purposes. Now go to the chart. And see what happens to the fund balance availability goes past the red is your minimum so but that is that available to pay cash or are you projecting that you would that, that do is a, a that's financed that's financed that, that, that particular that financed item will available. be financed okay. but you know going back to your go back to your other thing go up so the, you have all yeses here yes um you know, I, I don't know what's included in that 1.5 million for Martin Marietta Park. I know that's the match, but what is it? What what is that? What's that going to get us? We don't even know what's going to go into Martin Marietta Park because we're doing the study. Yeah, so, correct. to me, you've inflated something on the other side that we're not sure about. You know, um, the Riverwalk completion. <coughs> I'm not 100% sure about that yet. We're not 100% sure about that. So, so I think this top section. Correct me if I'm wrong. This top section was approved by the previous board. Somewhat this board. Somewhat. And, and so somewhat? Well, several of them, depending on which They're one. They're resurfacing and 
Old Airport Road. Airport Road. I thought. I thought you got on Old Airport Road, and that's that's the hard to see for me. Is one point nine nine five. Correct. I, I I thought the state of North Carolina was was paying part of that as well. Is that one two million dollars so our portion? Eighty seven thousand is what they're going to give us. So, so we need to take that out. I don't know if you're taking that into account or not. But that six eighty seven is what. That'll I'm make. Out. That'll make. A yeah, that's. It won't flow through, flow through from this. I will have to. Uh, I'd have to rerun the numbers in order to get that. But you can see that. Is there is the state providing anything on the Trent Road expansion as well? That's our. We don't know. That's ours. Okay. Why don't you just just take that off right there? Just take the whole thing off. No, take it back where it was. Create a new project that applies a negative 687, and it should adjust your fund balance to show what that negative 687 would do, right? Uh, roughly. I'll do this. And just split it across the four years. Yeah. So we got an engineer, manager, telling us finance, accountant, how to do a spreadsheet. <laughs> And, and we haven't voted on anything with the Riverwalk completion. Why? I mean, why are we showing a half million dollars in there if it hasn't been approved? Station. That include we included the operating cost in column C, so that includes the firefighters and the operations and a an engine, I believe. Let's, let's, let's rephrase that. The, the two point five million dollars to your question is the capital cost, including the actual engine, correct? Correct. Yes. The column C, which is the nine fifty eight eight thirty eight, is the personnel and operating costs associated with that fire. That will be year over year over year. And you're projected as your debt service plus the operation. That is correct. correct. So we were talking about with just one engine, correct? A For that fire station. One engine. Well, and so really then that puts you spending $2 million on to build a fire station, a substation? Is that realistic? I mean, that sounds like a lot of money to build a substation. It depends on what we're building here, Bobby. I mean, you know, if, if you know, it sounds like me we're building a really nice building there for two million dollars. How much did your main fire station cost? Oh, third. I don't know. I have no no idea. But we're not talking about a facility oh, I understand. that size. I'm just trying to put it in relative numbers. Though. Yeah, I don't know. How much did the Thurman Road don't, cost? Don't Do you know know. How much I the, no you remember idea. how much the Thurman? Would it be yeah. something along the line of a Thurman Road? I, I would think. To house everybody, right? Pardon me. It needs to be bigger than Thurman to house everybody, right? Yeah. And then the problem with Thurman Road right now. Thurman Road is small. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We can't get all the staff to have where to sleep. Okay. The, the two and a half million includes four hundred eighty-five thousand dollars for an engine. For what? Includes four hundred eighty-five thousand dollars for an engine. Yeah, that's that's probably close so, to right. So about two 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 point one for the station itself. And I think that's inflated, but you got to buy the land, right? Well, the land. Yeah. Yeah. may not have to buy the land, but you're going to have to buy the design fees. 
Uh, you have architect, engineer, and all this other stuff. Yeah. So directionally, it's, it may not be perfect, but it can be edited. Like it's just giving you a rough and I like to work on more realistic numbers. I think it helps us because you see that first wave. You saw it kind of scares you, like oh, we can't do anything. It scares you, but I think once you get into the meat of this, I think we can find some ways to. Well, let's go back to the top section. So just just so you know, here, real quick, yeah, go ahead. we we got an estimate for what that fire station costs. It's ninety six thousand dollars for engineering and architectural services. It was sixty thousand dollars for site prep, which is your grading and everything else. One point seven million dollars for the building construction. Sixty five thousand for the hardware and software to go into it, which is your, all your ITs and computers and uh, furniture and everything. Uh, no, I'm sorry, furniture is another seventy five thousand dollars because you got to have bed, furniture, all this other stuff. So. That totaled up to be two point zero seven two million dollars. Well, one thing I say, like I agree with Kitchen. them, is since we did we only gave direction, first. it may not happen. Why don't we just minus out the river walk completion? Okay, let's see what happens with that. Like we can check the no on river walk. Is everyone in agreement? You know, this is not we're not finalizing. Yeah. It's just we just to see what we happens. want to see what looks the numbers look like. So take that to no, and I'm going to look at the chart. It's getting a little better. And your out here is obviously a problem. Well, just just keep in mind the green. It's it's not. This is not something. I mean, that dark green line is your your working capital. Okay. The the the, the light green line is what our thirty percent number for thirty five percent. Thirty five percent number on our fund balance. The red line is a twenty five percent number, which is kind of what we had as an informal policy that we do not want to go below. Right. Okay. So you while you still have working capital there to work with that's where and, and the other thing that we we tried to factor in some growth that year over year one and a half percent of our what our growth is so that's kind of what you're starting to see there um, you know hopefully we have better growth than that but I mean we we try to be conservative with our expenses but also conservative with our revenue so that we're not pre presenting y'all stuff is that's unrealistic. A, not familiar with the spreadsheet I'm probably going to open Pandora's box here but is there a, a flag that you can check to change the tax rate? from 4.6 to 5.1 or whatever. I don't have that built in, I'm sorry. Okay, that's fine. I just wanted to ask that before someone else. Just generally, you know, it's $300,000 per cent. 300000 per cent, so he could build that in if he wanted to. Yeah. Basically, just like we did with the state thing, where it's $300,000 a year over the next however many years. Right. Or six hundred thousand if you go two cent or whatever. So well, we could, we could do that. Could you do a negative three hundred thousand? Yeah, that's the same one thing. If you, is that what you're saying? Exactly yeah. what I did yeah. with the state funding thing yeah. for the, the Oaks Road use coming. All right, let's go back to the project summary then. I think the other questions too. Of course, we will look at are there shovel ready grants for fire stations? I know they exist. Would we qualify? Um, would we consider the MSD contributing to some of the Riverwalk costs because it's in the MSD area? Right. Those are the types of things as we look at this. Maybe we don't have to bear all of that burden on the general fund. Maybe we can look at uh, more creative and grant ways to do some of these things as well. Was there, was there anything else up here that the, that the board right felt now. that you may not want to be funding, even though the previous board approved all this? Question, you know? um, uh, Jeff, is the Trent Road extension expansion part of the Columbia project? Is that what that's for? Part, part is, part's not. I think the 1.7 is to three lane Trent Road from Glen Burnie to Simmons Street. Correct. So the portion that's not covered by the Columbia Development Group. They're they're doing the construction and the widening from uh, from Glen Burnie to 17. This is for the section that's not. And the 800 for the developer. That's the incentive we had to give them. Correct. We are paying them back to make that road improvement on yeah. our city street. Why are we doing from that? From Glen Burnie to Simmons. Yes, no, yes. from Glen Burnie to, to the mayor's side. 17. We're, paying, we're paying them. We're paying them back for doing that. Why, why, do, why do we have to do that? Because, because otherwise we would have had to bid it out, and our timeline probably wouldn't have met theirs. They already had their stuff mobilized, so we paid them to go ahead and have that construction done because it's going to benefit their project and, and our citizens as far as We essentially it. outsource that project in a way. Otherwise, we would have to go through all these bidding requirements and, and design and everything else there. And that's to do the, the road construction to gain access to that development, correct? That's to three lanes. That's the three lanes from Bernie right. to 17. Our public infrastructure. 
along I, with. I, I reckon the only reason I'm saying it, I was thinking about it is I can remember being in departmental reviews when someone wanted to build a building, we required them to do the road structure as well to gain access to that building. Right? It's happened, yes. I just wanted to be jogged on what, remember what it was. I mean, I, we can't change that. That's already happening. So the only thing uh, that I believe... The 1.75, I guess you can hold on to that Trent Road expansion. I don't know that we... Is that part of the project? They're doing it right now. It's not. No. But, I mean, we're already, we're, 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 we've already submitted out for design and everything else. I mean, we're already working with the consultant. And, and it was already voted on in the previous board, correct? Mm -hmm. I mean, we're not here to change. I mean, I don't believe in that. I mean, one of the things that we could was but the river walk. We took that off. Is it in the current budget, or are we looking at it for the next fiscal budget? <coughs> JR? These items are not specifically budget. budgeted at this point. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> They are, we don't, uh, not necessarily, uh, they're, accounted for. They're, they're, accounted for, they're accounted for here, what we're doing, but uh, Trent, uh, this Trent Road developer, that one, is, that we do have a budget for that, we still have to take out the debt for it. Okay, so, uh, I same just want on record, I personally don't believe that we need to, you know, move backwards. This was something we're already working on. Mm -hmm. We're not gonna, I don't wanna sit here and nitpick on, on stuff like that. It's done, to me, I feel like it is. We need a budget, it's gonna obviously be in the budget. Let's move to something that we can manipulate right now. So what is the darn need for the Martin Marriott Park right now? What, what is the darn need? Well, why can't that be put on hold for? Well, I think they should do the planning part of it. I think they should get well, all the information. Like I think they should. $550,000 went for the consultant. consultant. Was that right? Uh, um, yes. Yeah. Well, that was mm -hmm. a private fund. Yeah, it was $50,000. Okay. Yeah, but we need to see the results of that, and they have to apply for the grant, but it doesn't necessarily, you know, we'd only have to put 500000 If we got the grant this year, we'd only have to put five hundred. correct? And that would be the maximum, and that's not saying we're going to get five hundred. dollars It's possible we could get two fifty or three hundred. It's a one-for-one one match, right. so depending on what, how we phase the park, right. we would... Let's be clear. We, the first year, we do not have to put any money as our match. The reason being is we were able to use the donation of the property as our match. Mm -hmm. After that, so technically we currently have the $500,000 match for the donation of the property. That's the whole reason why we set it up that way. Meaning that we can, we can get $500,000 of funding to move forward with the first phase as a maximum amount if we don't want to put another dime into it. Now, how far is $500,000 going to get you? I don't know. That may be depending upon what is acceptable as a first phase. What do we want to do? Do we want to do a parking lot and trail? Do we want to start setting it up? Do we want to build, go ahead and start on a grass amphitheater or at least a grading and set it up? Whatever comes out of this study, I think needs to be reported back before we start making those decisions. But ultimately, we could apply right now because we asked for the exemption on acquiring the land to use the donated land as our donation towards the $500,000 power grant. So technically, we're going to apply for it, and hopefully we get $500,000 because we already got the donation. I mean, I believe that we need to have that. I mean, that's, that's so going to be a benefit to the city as a whole. I mean, I see the vision of it, and that's something that we need to continually work on as a board because that, that benefits the whole city. You know, we got so many people that came out and, you know, gave their <coughs> opinion. We do need to make sure we have money in the budget to be able to do whatever we decide to do. That's important to me. I, I'm, I'm excited about it. I'm excited about it too, but is that this interest of the city right now with all these other issues we have, our people be trying to find money. For. I, I would just say I think it's kind of like 401k. People say you can't afford not to invest in 401k when you're getting a one for one match. I don't know if there are any opportunities you're going to get a one for one dollar match. I agree. I don't have a problem putting that. You know, I don't know that I want to put the extra million in there, but I mean, we should at least have the 500 in case the match comes through. We can at least, because it's going to come in phases anyway. You're not going to do that park in one fell swoop. So, you know, at least and, it and may allow us to do another project this year. That and keep in mind too. I mean, this is this is just part of grant on certain things that we want to do to get grant. That's grant funds, basically, what we're looking to get. You know, we talked about if we do decide to do an amphitheater, or we talked about naming rights. I mean, who's to say we can't go out there and say, you know what, $100,000 a year, we want uh, PepsiCo or Coca-Cola or oh, whoever. Don't even go there. <laughs> don't even go there. Uh, whoever, whoever we want it to be. 
uh, let's, let's call it uh, uh, Baker, Baker's Kitchen, hundred thousand dollars a year over ten years for naming rights. That's a that's a million bucks. Right. That's a million bucks that we can potentially apply towards redevelopment. I don't want to leave it off the plate right. if we're going to get money to right. go develop this site because, in my opinion, I think that this park is going to be a regional tourism mm -hmm. and and draw to Hickory. Or, I'm sorry. Uh, New Woo. Hickory. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm from Hickory, so I haven't said that in a long time. But you can do that with anything. If they're going to put a skate park in there, you can name, you could sell a naming right to that skate park if you wanted to. ABC Corporation Skate Park. Yeah, but there's a big difference in getting naming rights for amphitheater and naming rights for a skate park. Understood, but there's, you know, there's people who will do that. I mean, you could say Rotary Club. That could be the Rotary Club skate park, and they could raise the funds. So there's opportunities well, so much to, land to be able to do. Yeah, well, that's true. Well, and there's things. also the public-private partnership model where the amphitheater could be run by a private entity, okay. and, and they would absorb a lot of these costs, mm -hmm. right? And the city, because someone's got to schedule the venues, you've got to have staff, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. You know, make this thing come successful. down to Moorhead City and see how they work it down there. We rent it, they built it, we rent it. But Moorhead City also it. sold their rights in perpetuity for the naming, and I'm not in any way wanting to get into that because that's how you generate your money. I mean, once somebody right. paid what they paid, they get to put their name on that forever. I mean, it's like, it's that's like a, a cemetery, cemetery deal. Yeah. <laughs> big rock, big rock. <laughs> I mean, that's the reason why it, that's the reason why the the naming rights have changed in Charlotte on their amphitheater numerous times. It went from the Verizon Wireless Amphitheater to the Time Warner Cable Arena, or what? Well, I mean, you know, all this other stuff. I mean, it's changed multiple I'm not times. Not necessarily talking about that. I'm talking about the operation of it. They let a private entity come in and operate. Understood. It. And that could be an option, right? And then you share some of the proceeds coming from the concert right <coughs> you pay the rent you know, just, just, rent just to be clear here what we've got is 1.5 million dollars uh, foster came to me and said hey just as a general idea a match of seven hundred fifty thousand dollars a year for over two years how would we fund uh, it's like how would we fund this well we're not going to be able to fund seven hundred fifty thousand a year for, for the next two years for whatever match we end up needing uh we're not going to fund that out of fund balance directly it's likely something i would finance over a 10-year period so that's so that's what this shows Okay, so that's the fund. So basically, uh, taking it out in 19, the funding from FY20 through FY23 is what's shown here. Obviously, there'd be additional funding going out. Uh, and, I, and I'm just going to throw this out here, and I don't know, maybe somebody else is, I'm not going to try to steal thunder, but there are alternative ways in which the city can determine whether the public wants to accept this project as its baby for the next however many years. I mean, you can float a general obligation bond at a next election or whatever to see what the, the, the public votes on it. That's a way you can generate money because they may say, you know what, we're willing to accept uh, an additional tax to have this awesome amenity here at Newburn, whatever it may be. And then that's their voice being heard. Now there's cost of having a, a uh, bond and, and actually putting it out there for vote, very similar to the way you do elections uh, and have that on the ballot. But that's that's other ways that you can do it. Same thing, you can do it with, with uh, fire stations. You know, is it is it important? Like, enough, so. I think, I think but that's that's, that's a way in which you can do it. Are you not lumping it all together? You can do a, a multiplex fire station that covers your EOC, your voice. I like that voting aspect of it though, because true, that's why we're here. I mean, we are saying we're representing our constituents. Well, the, the negativity, the negative thing to it, the negative thing. No. And I understand they might not they, want they, fire they may station. say no, and so the need for the safety or the need for the park may still be there. You may be still hearing that, and. and then at that point they voice their opinion that no, we don't want that. So there, there's there's pros and cons, which ultimately pushes the tough decision back to the board of saying, well, we agree with you or we don't. Oh, and that's what we're here for. But it, it gauges as a way to um, have a paper trail on numbers on what the city, the, the people in the city want. So if we they say no, they want a fire station, but we have, you know, information that we prove that it needs to be done. Okay, we do it. I mean, but still, that ha we have a back. I mean, that's information to me. I think that's a, a, well, a lot of cities will bundle those. together projects that get a little bit of everyone's vote, right? So you you get the people who want the fire station in the bond. You get people who want the amphitheater in the bond. You sure don't want to put the two together. together. Well, yeah. and, and see what happens is is, is you have um, you would vote on multiple aspects of whatever that bond may be. Um, Chris, you living in Charlotte, you probably know the city of Charlotte every two years puts out a bond for housing. That's something that they do is towards their housing. Almost every other year they're sending something out regarding uh, low income to moderate housing or whatever so that, so that they can afford to continue to have uh, affordable housing in their, in their city. 
Um, that's one thing they do. Same thing, uh, Greenville did it for stormwater improvements throughout there not too long ago, I think several years ago. The city of Hickory did uh, uh, a, a, a bond, floated a bond for infrastructure improvements throughout their city for right-of-way uh, uh, improvements such as sidewalks, roads, you know, everything else, as well as a greenway that ran all the way along the river, the Catawba River and Lake Hickory. Um, big recreational opportunity. So there's all kinds of different things in which bonds are floating for. So those are what we talked about in our goal setting, um, optional funding sources, other things. So it's not right. just saying we, we don't have the money. There are, that's your job to find those optional funding sources or optional ways to do what we've asked you to do based on our goals to come forward and say, hey, we can do this, but this is the tool we have to use to do it. So, so back to the three goals that got the most consensus votes, uh, the public safety one, and yeah. the, uh, the, the stormwater and the redevelopment. So we don't have a line item for stormwater, but there's a million and a half going into stormwater. So does that account for the stormwater, or do we need to create a new line item for the goal of stormwater? Improvements. We would need to spend more. I, I think I think that would be a further discussion down the road, kind of as the mayor indicated. Everybody kind of needs to be brought up to speed on the stormwater, where it's at, and then how we move forward. Do we continue to take out one and a half million dollars every two, five years, whatever it may be, to do improvements, or do you establish it in the rate structure, uh, whatever it may be? I think at that point it's kind of a. So do we want to create just for today's discussion purposes, create a replicate the one and a half million? as a project, just as a directionally correct, just so we can kind of see the impact on the budget to do the three things that you guys said you wanted to do, right? Would that be a good place to start? We can do that. And it could be a different number, right? but just, I, I think it's important for the members just to kind of see, these are the three things you said you wanted to be able to do. Let's check yes against those three things and see what the impact is against the budget. And then the other one, JR, is the public private redevelopment fund. Just put some money into redevelopment. And it may be that we take money, we take money from something else in order to do it, like the two-hour parking enforcement. Maybe we use that out of MSD or whatever. We don't know that that what that number. Well, that's a no right now. Oh, yeah, it is a no. Okay, I'm sorry. It's selected. So. All right. So let's. Uh, so I mean, this looks this. That helped me make sure I'm reading the chart right. Until 22. Right, till, till 22, you hit the bottom of where you prefer to be by policy. Right. So basically in 22 and 23, you're going to have a problem. Unless you do something different, i.e. raise income, have more economic development. Some, some money needs to come in, or you need to finance this out longer, create a bond. So this is when your problem occurs in 22. You guys are all re-elected in, what, 21? So you can just pass this off to the next board. Kick the can down the road, right? So in theory, correct me if I'm misreading this, you can fund the three things that you just said you wanted to do without a tax increase and without a bond, except for this little lag here at the end, the staff may be like a crazy old one. Not true. Not true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not true. Mm -hmm. Now, you're going to have to tell us now we're statutorily obligated to use stormwater funds, right? And we got a one-time approval from LGC, but if you want to spend a million and a half in stormwater again, that's likely going to have to come out of stormwater fund. So you're going to have to increase the stormwater fee. Okay. Which, and you could lower, which, you could to, lower taxes. To your point, if that is the case, theoretically and based on this graph we need to take it off because that's paid through the stormwater fund through the rate and not the general fund right okay so take it out of the general fund let's see well, what happens Jeff, what do you think the next round you get to get maybe through they are check lgc I'll check stormwater go yeah. first from three but it really didn't change it really didn't change it it's closer the adding line closer to the ground. I'm talking about keeping the feet though, right? And just putting them in the general fund. Darker in the dark. Have it come on the general fund, like you see. So just, yeah, just a few purposes. But that's money. You see, that's yeah. money. Raise the tax fee. Raise the tax rate. Well, that's a question. Do 
when, when a developer, and I'm, I'll use um, <coughs> Blue Water, for example, when he goes in there and digs all these ditches and all this stormwater control that he's taking care of and stuff, is do we charge any type of fee to handle his stormwater from that development in our infrastructure? So it's, it's each lot's what's charged. That's correct. Yes. But not the the developers not charged anything. There's a, there's a plan review fee. The, the developer the developer has to build the infrastructure. Right. Okay. Once the infrastructure is built, whatever we take over for maintenance, at that point, we charge the users, which would ultimately be the homeowners that live in that neighborhood, yeah, for their stormwater fee to continue maintenance of that. Is there a different um, charge for commercial versus residential? The What it is is you have an equivalent residential unit. So what we found is over the entire city, you have a certain average for residential square footage as far as impervious area. So that wound up calculating to be $2.10 as a equivalent residential area. And the square footage wound up being the equivalent residential unit. So okay. as you have a commercial unit that is 10 times the size of what our res equivalent residential unit would be, that means their bill is 10 times more, which would be $21 versus $2.10. You see what I'm saying? Sure. So it's based on the size of which your impervious area is up to a max. Do you, out of the top of your head, max. someone like the mall or something like that, about what kind of money are they paying? They pay the maximum amount, yeah. which is how much a month? Uh, it's, you remember I don't remember off the top of my head, it's like four hundred eighty some dollars a month. Okay. So the max anyone can pay is basically four hundred five hundred dollars a month. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna move us on just a little bit because it affordability right now we're kind of within reason you can debate we, staff's going to have to go back and do a lot more detailed analysis but directionally we're not real far apart right is that a safe assumption so i want to just see what happens if we add a couple other items that you guys had on your priority list um i think i heard staff say that in the spreadsheet there's built in some uh increase in salary for employees built in that's already in there into the base expenses, we built in 2% per year growth in salaries. Okay, because one of the items that had vote from some of the members but not a consensus was uh, compare and contrast others regarding merit or cost of living options. So in the, in the numbers right now, there is some money available for that if the board elects to do that. We're not deciding right now. Just directionally, that's accounted for right. in the spreadsheet. So we're good there. The other area that uh, there seemed to be some um, building consensus uh, with amongst the board members was around the parks and rec opportunities, specifically uh, two areas, the uh, regional park to leverage the donation of Mark Marietta Group. So that's kind of in there, right? That's in that current project. So that's already accounted for. Um, and then the other one, there was some interest in the Pleasant Hills Community Center, which I don't think is in there. But is there a box to check for? There is. Is there an estimate for the community center? Twenty-three. So if we, just for argument's sake, we're going to check that yes, just to see what the impact would be on the on the graph. If you change that to yes, you'll toggle over to the graph, and let's just see if, if there's any major impact there. So I'm still, we're still kind of. We have a problem in these out years, it appears, mm -hmm. when we start toggling. But it didn't change significantly. Right. Can we, what's checked off right now? Can we go back to that sheet? Yes. What do we have? So what's checked off is everything on top here for the annual, uh, for the, sit the current initiatives underway. And then down below here, we have oh, fire station. Oh, that's what I'm saying. So this is based off if we did a fire station. Mm -hmm. Okay. Public private as well. I mean, the fire, the fire station is a big one. Mm -hmm. I mean, like just, just for friends and giggles here. Uncheck uh, the fire station. Uncheck the fire yeah. station and you'll see what it is. I mean, anytime you've got a major capital cost like that, that's that's a huge fee. So. Mm -hmm. Cause I mean, not it's, it's not just the capital cost that you're talking about. It's almost a million dollars worth of personnel and operation every single year that you have to count for. Oh, yeah, I right. So 
So from here, it appears, if we go back and check the fire station, because that was one of their, one of their items. Uh, um, not voting you, today, but directionally, you're not real far off. When, from when you say that, you said improve emergency response times. So that's not necessarily a fire station. That could be innovative ideas on doing that. That's so absolutely. necessarily checking off the fire station, the amount of building one, we, I mean, we, we got to play with that a little bit because we check that. That isn't that that line right there does not say fire station. And, and we can continue to do more. Here's some of the things like here. Here are some of the things I've charged Bobby uh, uh, with uh, our fire chief. You know, I asked him. I was like, Hey, you know, look at whatever we can with regards to efficiencies to try to drive down what our response times are. So he set up some training up some training initiatives over at the fire training grounds to have his different engine companies or firefighting companies. Y'all probably Bobby probably know better to determine how long it takes each one of them to do stuff because they all do it a little bit differently. It's not all standardized. So they, they, and they, they start timing each segmented section so that they can see, okay, which one's doing it the fastest for this section and this section. And then you start applying that as a, here's our standards of practice thing. Another thing you can look at that we see, traffic and stop lights and everything else make a huge difference. There used to be money that you could get from grants to have to where it ties into your signalization and where you're driving down MLK and instead of running all this traffic and all these stoplights, all those lights can be turned green because there's a special device you can put on your uh, fire engines or police cars that turn those lights green so that they can get the through and, and continue to move through traffic. There's lots of different ways that you can look to drive the times down to help with uh, uh, fire response times or EMS times or whatever. And even that, even, even the switching the lights becomes a collaborative effort. We, we've reached out to the county, we've reached out to the hospital who handles the EMS calls and all this other stuff to help fund and collaborate together to see if that might be an option for us to help drive down our response and service delivery to our citizens. Right, which what so, everything you just said sounds like we don't need to check off, hypothetically, 2.5 million. You can put it back on there and figure out some other projects that we're doing. How I'm, I'm just yeah, saying, wait I'm just but saying but and I, I agree with everything that's been said here. All this stuff will improve. They've already taken a bunch of steps, like Mark has said. The time starts when that communicator picks up telephone and says 911. They have worked with those people in trying to get the time from they, when they hang the phone up to the time that the button is pushed. That's when the time starts. They have gotten really good at that. They, they've got that down now to a science. Then the time is when the bell hits to take the fire truck, the fireman to get dressed, get on the fire equipment, and drive out the door. That time they have worked on and they've got it down to a science. They even leave the door of the fire trucks open now so they don't have to waste time to reach up there and grab the door handle and open the fire truck. <coughs> you know? So they've gotten those down, those times down as, as much as they can. The problem is, is that when, when you're, you're talking about some 10 minute response times and, and NFPA wants you to be there in four, there's, you, unless you put jet engines on those fire trucks and clear the roadways, you're not going to make it up by, by taking care of some signalization. And, and I understand everything you're saying, and I hear you, but me representing my ward and my vision on how I feel about the city, I don't believe that looking at this chart in 2021, that I wanted to invest 2.7 million and, and take away what really needs to be done in some of these communities. But but you also a fire engine remember. that my taxpayers and my ward have to pay. <laughs> when we when I when my ward that we say like I, I don't understand how we vote. one of their houses burned. That's I, exactly right. Go talk to Manier over in in Taberna that the, when the, their house got struck by lightning. They, the fire you, department. You said to burn them. Yeah. Okay, well, what well, about, let me what get about, what about War II? Well, let me yeah, get through my statement. Let me give an example. I'm going to jump in and say timeout. One thing that we haven't had happen to the board is a presentation from the fire chief. Yeah. Right. So until that happens, we're not making a decision to have the fire station on or Good off, point. right? But we're fire spending the majority of the strategic planning about whether we're checking yes or no on that money. This is just directional. You're trying to give it's already some been direction. determined is a yes. They the majority of these board members wanted to see it. Oh, I don't know. 
about that. I think that. it's trying to give you just a general high level overall sense of the impact of some of these initiatives so that you can see as we look four, three years down the road, tough we may have some tough decisions to make. And, and um, what you've got to take into consideration too in tw the year 2022, the our, uh, hopefully our tax base will be a lot higher than what it is today. Well, we can't plan on hope. Well, I, no, but I if we do our job, today, it will be. And okay, today, okay, hang on, hang on, hang on. We're, not, we're not voting on a fire station today, so let's just bring it back up a little bit. A lot of passion on it from a lot of parties. It's good to see, so keep the passion. But You're forcing up your ward's got sir. a fire station. <laughs> hang on. All right, so now, that directionally, more than just okay, 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 enough, enough. Does to separate you two? Part of the board. I'm, I'm just saying, I, ha I have to be here in this meeting, <clears throat> and we're discussing stuff. I mean, it's not what represents my ward, so I'm going to get frustrated. Yeah, but, th but then again, Barbara can get frustrated because it, what you're saying, you have that fire protection, she doesn't in that ward. I saw somebody die out there because they couldn't get the thing out there. I know you've heard it a hundred times, but I'm sorry. So she needs protection in her area. We got to, we got to weigh the pros and cons. Got to work together on it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, doing work with Trent Road doesn't improve my ward one bit, but I'm yeah. all in favor of it. Right. Right. So let's just take a time out here. A lot of good energy, a lot of good discussion, a lot of passion. Your citizens will be yeah. proud of you for representing them well. So that said, I, I don't feel like you're real far off as a board. You've got a little bit of tough decisions to make, but we're using directional information. None of this is tied up and put a bow on. So I think we need to give staff the time now. You've given them some direction about what you'd like to see. To your point, they need to go back and kind of figure out how can we make this happen? What are the levers that staff can dial in both financially and efficiencies out of other areas, et cetera, et cetera, and report that back to you as a board. And then some of these items you're gonna to have to start making some decisions and voting against and, and giving staff authority to move forward on them. But that's not today. So I think if I were to summarize where we are, we've got a set of six goals with a series of objectives and funding to support most, most of them directionally, right? Uh, at least the ones that you voted on kind of with our straw man poll. Now that's not an official vote, it's not a binding vote, right? It was just a quick to see how close the board was. And the good news is you're close on three or four things, and then there are two or three things that you're not far apart on, and then there's a bunch of onesie twosies that, that may, or may be important to one of you, but didn't seem to be important to the group as a whole. And those we probably need to spend a little bit of time kind of putting them on the list or taking them off the list as a board. And I don't know if that's today or if you want to do that as a follow-up session. I'll take some direction from you. Yeah, I think, um, you know, ultimately, um, trying, to, trying to gain the major issues uh, really kind of gives us direction to move forward to look at, you know, what are the available funding mechanisms for us to go out and find this, present that to you. You, you may be completely against doing a bond. You may be for doing just, hey, look, they elected us, let's make it suit. I don't know where this board stands. I mean, we've been together, you know, for, for two, meet, two, two and a half meetings at this point. So, I mean, you know, what's important here is understanding where this board is and say, you know what, they elected us to make these tough decisions, so we need to make the tough decision. It may be that you'd rather float a bond out there and see what the public thinks about it. You know, there's lots of different things that we can do, and we can give you those options based on what we're hearing and the input we're getting from you on this particular uh, uh, strategic plan moving forward. The other thing is, is I, you know, I, I like to put deadlines on stuff. I like to put timelines on things. I mean, when do we expect things to happen? Um, you know, it, it, it may be that, hey, we recognize that, that we do need to do something with our public safety, and it may not just need to be fire. It may, may need to be police and fire at a particular location in those areas. And at that point, we may say, okay, well, let's plan for that in X year, and we move out and, and we start working on that. Of course, there's times that lead up to that. We've got to have design, we've got to have land acquisition, we've got all this other stuff. So, I mean, I think we, we get the high level, that's the reason why the, the why, the high level where we want to be, and let us dive down into how do we get there? And what do we do to get there? That's why we're having this. Well, there's a great synergy that came up yesterday that I think maybe just went over everybody's head for a minute, but I picked up on it and maybe I'm wrong, but the fire and the community center being potentially in the same facility, right? 
maybe there's an opportunity to do that. You get two of your goals for one one dollar spent, so to speak. That's something staff can come back and look at and see if it's a realistic option or not, right? Based on the fire chief's input, based on what's happened in your community center needs, and see if that comes together as a common common thing. I don't know if it will or not, but at least they have direction now to go kind of look at that, right? May I ask another question? Because this just popped in my mind. This this two point five million dollars for a fire station, knowing that this thing is going to take for probably four years mm -hmm. to build, why are we projecting two point five million dollars in the in, I mean the first year, the first year you're probably talking about architectural fees. Right. I think it is uh, if you'll scroll up right here, sir, I think it is it doesn't pick up until column F, which is yeah. what year I think 20. 20. Okay. So there is there was a little bit of thinking that it's so we're not to spending two point five million dollars in next year's budget. Right. Correct. Right. Yeah. This 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 assumes that we would be taking out the loan in the previous year, which would be probably towards the end of <coughs> FY19, which would be somewhere between. Well, then what? Yeah. Okay. Well, so, so that, that's that, that's just an assumption we had to make. We had to make, we had to make some assumptions. And I just went full year to make it easier. So I mean, it's very yeah. like the But it does. I have an accounting it background. It, I'm looking at it as I know what we're doing now. But I plan on re running. And um, you know, this is something where when you look at the numbers, we we're, we're or whoever the board is at the time is going to figure out what's going on here. How what are we going to be able to do co to continue to improve our city? So it does what we do now impacts what happens in the future. And that's the numbers and accounting. What I'm looking at when I see it. So, you know, that's, I'm, I'm just, that's how I feel of, about it, that's all. Yeah, so the, the good news is it's accounted for over a period of time to answer your question, sir. And the good news is it hasn't been committed to, to answer your question. Yet. So, directionally, I think you're pretty close. I think at this point, my feeling is we need to give staff some time to go tighten this up. And maybe there's option, you know, two and a half million for a fire station, maybe the chief can come in and do it for a million with a small substation. Right, and cut the cost in half, make it more affordable for the city. I, I don't know, I'm not a fire chief. That's why we have one on staff, and let him come in and make a recommendation to, to the value the engineer. So, those are the kind of decisions that I think need to be made. Um, but I think, I feel actually, I think you guys should feel pretty good. I mean, I know there's a little bit of passion right here at the end, but overall, you can kind of do some of the things that you want to do for the citizens, and you're not impacting the tax base. And if you need to dial in a tax base at a different date to kind of get the numbers to be where they want them, that's a decision that staff will tell you what the impacts are. Chris, did, did we cover the bullet point three that there was consensus on? Right. Redevelopment. There's money in there for redevelopment. Yeah, there was money for redevelopment. Yes. Sorry. Right there where it says private, public private investment for redevelopment. 150,000k a year. And, and clearly, that's obviously up to your discretion. I mean, we, yeah, can we bump we, that we just, to we just just 1.5? For what? For what? What, what, what kind of expense? See, what what kind of expense would we have there? It's a committee that will be appointing, right? And then the investor comes well, in and they well, it just is what it is. I mean, we, we just we, we thought, okay, one hundred fifty thousand dollars maybe for some. Uh, incentives like we did with uh, you know Trent Road with Columbia Development or something oh, that's or something else. That's really not just specific to redevelopment commission. Yes, it's just redevelopment, 150k. A year. The, the legalities in setting up a re redevelopment commission are very little cost in that. It's what are you going to do to create? I mean, we can sit here and say we're going to create a committee that's going to change the world, uh, eradicate cancer, whatever it is. I mean, we can say we're going to do all this and set up all these committees and do all this other stuff. You've got to fund it if you're going to make a difference. Um, so, you know, whatever that is, there's got to be some kind of investment. I think he was just trying to capture some kind of $150,000 to put some nominal fee in there of, hey, what are we planning to do in this area? Yeah. It may be that that number is zero and that we want to start applying $200,000 of the $225,000 that we get in our CDBG funds to go specifically to this area. We can change that program. You know, there's certain ways in which we can do stuff, but, I mean, that's all got to be vetted. We've got to look at what those options are, and it comes down to a lot of different things. Maybe that we want it to come somewhat out of the general fund. Well, and if the Redevelopment Commission does its job the way I'm thinking they're going to do their job, it's actually going to be an income for us because we're going to be selling property, putting houses on it. It's going to be privately owned now. It's going to be created a tax base. That's where I talked about the net revenue. 
maybe at that point you set up the net revenue for that particular project area. Any kind of investment in that area, maybe you provide some kind of incentive for them to do to, to come invest in that Absolutely. area, and then that reinvestment gets reinvested back into that fund so that you can continue to roll that on down and stop taking it out of the general fund. Absolutely. That way it starts paying for itself at the net revenue type fund where you set it up to move forward. The creative kind of thing I was talking about that we look yeah, at other exactly. options. So I'm thinking the next steps are for staff to take this back, re-wordsmith it a little bit, look at some of the, the math. There's some, they need to probably sequence based on all your input over the last 24 hours, some very specific presentations from say, for example, the School of Government, from the Fire Chief. Um, I'm sure there's some others that I have forgotten. But storm water, public water. Storm water, public water. Can we, can all we? those need to be uh, accounted for in presentations to this group so you have more input uh, in, in how you want this to go forward. Yes, ma'am? Could we hypothetically throw a yes on the um, Union Point Park permanent stage? That, that's highly, that's very, very minor. Uh, I'll tell you. Yeah, um, not, don't make that big of it. Yeah, it's... Next to nothing. Yeah. Was that? Was I just, that? I just wanted to see what it looked like. Yeah. I mean, I'm, uh, hypothetically, one of the things I have built into this budget is about 1.5 million dollars a year in, in uh, vehicle rolling stock, cap okay. equipment purchases. It, that couldn't potentially be rolled up into that. There's community development. Was it 50 grand a year? It's typically given in the budget. So Something like that. That's kind of up to the manager's discretion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any other uh, items that you guys want to make sure get covered off on by the staff? I just, I just have a generalized statement. I think this board from what I'm hearing and the projects they're looking into, I think that the board realistically should be looking at a minimum 25% fund balance. That's not realistic for where we want to go as a city that we're going to maintain a 35 to 50% fund balance. And I think that's important to make that statement to get directions to the staff so you're not all the time thinking that you got to keep that fund balance up because like Bobby said yesterday, I mean there's grants you probably can't get because we we look like we're too, uh, as a city, uh, we have too much liquidity. So just for all these so many projects. Go back to the graph, Chair. <coughs> so is, is so anybody have a problem? taking this red line down. No, he's saying that I think he wants us to stay between the green and the red to line. Affirm, reaffirm the red line. Reaffirm the red line. The red line's right now at 25. <laughs> Try to stay within yep. that area so 25. that that gives us uh, the ability to seek out grants where we're not looking like we're just. Can we adopt our policy officially for that? Uh, yes, I've got a partial draft ready to go on that anyway. So I, what I what I would like to have from this board though uh, is the minimum, said so the minimum, but a goal. Uh, as well, so something we would like we would likely hover around maybe maybe the thirty five percent, you know, just so that way because when you when you as soon as you hit twenty five, you got to be very seriously considering doing some sort of rate increase. You don't want you don't want to be up and down with twenty five. You want to be a, a slightly higher number, thir like like thirty thirty five percent. What is do we have a policy there? We have an inform. If you remember the the we set very stringent criteria and and formal formally adopted policies with regards to our uh, electric water and sewer funds because it affected our revenue bonds. But we did not set a formal policy. We set a informal policy of 25% being the minimum that we'd want to go to. So you, the board can adopt a formal policy. Um, obviously, at that point, you've got to make a decision. If we start getting below the formal policy, that means no you've got to make a decision. No higher than 30 to say minimum mat, maximum mat. Is that what you're saying? I, 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 would, I, I would give you a little more than 30 to 25 to 30 because I mean that, that that's a pretty tight window. Yeah, and, yeah. I, I would I would say what we want to do. You don't want to put a maximum on there. What you want? And honestly, honestly that floor. yeah. And honestly, that becomes a little bit of the. It's not necessarily just the staff's that, responsibility. Yeah. It's the board's responsibility because I mean if, if we're finding efficiencies in our expenses throughout the year and we put money back into the general fund, how do you want to spend that? Because it's not just our responsibility. I mean, we may be being more efficient. We may have grown the city, so are we in the audit year at thirty? You know, at thirty-eight percent, we got three to ten percent there that the board can choose to spend. And I mean, that's that's what you do, and that's that's sort of how we've been operating over the past several years. I mean, yes, our we finished at forty-one percent this past year, I think it was, wasn't it? And there was one year we finished at fifty-two percent, but then that gave them the liquidity to go out here and spend four and a half million dollars, or two and a half, you know, two and a half million dollars on resurfacing and everything else. So they focused on you know, what we saved and apply those two specific goals of what the board wanted to do. 
now sure. that we know the goals, we can sure. help drive some yeah. of those. But I mean, ultimately, our, our goal is to try to keep it in that 25 to 35 range, you know, moving depending on where things are. But occasionally, revenues turn out great, expenditures turn out less than what we expected, and it may end us up here. But then that gives y'all the options to go do these projects. So that means you can bring that before the board that you have drafted up that you can vote on. I'll, I'll, I'll have it ready for you all for the 27th. The second meeting in February. Yes, ma'am. We have that just for just for quick knowledge. I mean, we, we utilize that at Nakempa. Uh, Armand Harris, you were there for mm -hmm. that meeting. You know, we have a a, uh, a minimum capital and a working capital that we try to stay at. And, and where the, the working capital is is where the, the the rate committee and the board set so that staff had the direction to kind of stay somewhere around where that working capital was. It allows them to do specific projects to go out here and do whatever they need to do but maintain that safe uh, safe range so that if we have a hurricane we have to go spend four million dollars to recover from it we got it well, the most, the, the most cities do most cities have this uh, cap somewhere I mean and do you know what it might be yeah, are we in line with yeah. a lot of the other cities uh, yeah, the 25 percent is, is very much in line with a lot of other cities do because a lot of them are you know they try to stay obviously higher than, higher than that because I mean, you know especially given the fact where we're located I mean we're right on the coast so Hurricane come through and devastate us, and then you have to knock off about a million and a half dollars right off our fund balance like that. And then we have then we have to wait for FEMA to reimburse us, so we're going to have to have some operating money until that and money starts flowing in. And not only that, it destroys your tax base. I mean, exactly. you know, if exactly. a man's house is gone, he don't pay taxes on exactly. it. Exactly. No, so it's years and years and years to recover. Exactly. Mm -hmm. so. But I, I think 25 is a good number, and I think yeah. what we aim to do is stay somewhere in that 30 to 35 range as a, as a typical operating uh, capital budget. That would be my recommendation if I would give it to you. Good. So uh, I'm feeling like we're at a good stopping point. Everybody agreeing? Any other? Uh, there may be other topics, Mark, you want to cover with the board while they're together, but uh, as it relates to kind of I think there's been a lot of passion and energy and we need to give staff some time to kind of digest this and bring it back to you guys. So I guess moving forward for, for, for staff, you know, is is it, you know, we want to get this, we, we want to go in, do some, some wordsmithing, get some of this cleaned up, maybe even try to put some realistic timelines on some of this stuff, bring this back before the board. But ultimately, I think what I have heard also is there are a couple deep dive type things that the board would like to hear on. Um, do you want those during regular business meetings or do we want to set up work sessions for work, session, work, work sessions. sessions? Okay, and typically our work sessions have been on the third Tuesdays of, of the month. Obviously, we got budget season coming up, so the sooner the better. Um, February uh, is a month which we typically didn't have work have sessions, uh, but we definitely can do that. Um, we can definitely do that. We're uh, more than happy to do that. So. Um, I think we're ready pretty much with the, the fire presentation. I think we could probably fire have Matt ready for the stormwater stuff by that time. Uh, so if y'all wanted to set the third Tuesday as a work session for us to listen to stormwater and fire presentations, we definitely could do that. You might be able to get school government by then too. And I may be able to get school government here, here, here for the, the redevelopment. Yeah. Not that it's going to be third because we meet on the second and fourth. So it would be the third. Um, yeah. Or we can, we can push it in. I mean, y'all can set it. It doesn't have to be a Tuesday. It doesn't have to be what it would be. I mean, how does everybody feel about every now and then doing a Saturday like this for, you know, three, four hours? I feel like we get, we might could get a lot more. You might could have two presentations in that sense versus, you know, kind of coming or in. Friday. And, you know, or Friday afternoon. Friday afternoon, afternoon yeah. Uh, Friday afternoon. So I, I mean, Saturdays, I certainly would be here I mean, if you have them. Okay, I work. Okay, yeah. Yeah. I mean, Friday, I mean, Friday, 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 no. I'd rather be Friday, Friday after Friday after Friday. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, Friday. I don't have a problem with that. I mean, just it would condense more time. I think <coughs> I find us somewhat, it's hard, you know, after an hour or two, it seemed like you we get lost in the yeah, evenings. Yeah, it needs to be. And so I'd rather, you know, an afternoon come in and work like we did yesterday. I thought we made good accomplishments yesterday and got a lot done. It could be that we could have two deep dodge, you know. We had three or four hours we could. You know, maybe at least. Do we want to pick a Friday afternoon to set up? Mm -hmm. Is everybody else okay with that? Yeah. February 16th. I'm good with that. Uh, 
Um, yeah. I may be a little late. I will be in the Outer Banks for a presentation in the morning, but I couldn't be. You need to make a motion. We call for a special work session on February the 16th at 1 p.m. at? Here? Yeah. Development Services. Second. Motion second. All in favor, motion say aye. Aye. All opposed, sign. Motion carries. Okay, and the topics, uh, just so I'm clear, that we're going to try to cover for sure will be the fire, uh, and the school water. Uh, well, I, want, I want us to be talking about that redevelopment. And the redevelopment. So I'm going to try, try to get those three in. That's I think redevelopment. I think it's a hour, 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 give each one an hour, and then some you know, discussion. Hold on, so fire. If we keep it high level, we can start diving. Chris, you might need you to keep us up. I've had a good time. Y'all are y'all are easy to work with. I love you. It's easy for you to say you're leaving. <laughs> hey, I am an official New Vernian. So I've got the pen now. So I, I want to see you guys. Yeah, but I'm going to give you the pen. You got a pen, but I'm going to give you the pen. Well, this one's from the mayor. I feel pretty special. Uh -huh. <laughs> amongst ourselves, but I know I've been talking to Mark about the whole, uh, the agenda and what we do on the first meeting and on the second. Has, has the staff made any changes with that or thought process in regards awesome. to Thank you. how we bulk up and, um, you know, any presentations that we do would be like on the, on the first meeting when the citizens want to come and engage us and then the second meeting, you know, all business. Business, but if, but if we have any dire need of business, it can be on the first meeting. Yeah, I mean, there's there's going to be times where we have to do that. It's, it's, it's the board's meeting. We do whatever the board's meeting. Sometimes kind of the presentations and getting down, the, you know, when you're presenting things and employee of the month or whatever you're doing, it, it really kind of drags it out. Then we've got to have a lot of business. You know, the agendas then tend to be heavy. I think just looking at them, if we're going to have a couple of presentations, I'd rather group them. I, I think y'all have a, this, this is just going to be my, percept, my, my, my comment here. The January meetings are always longer because you skip a meeting in December. So we have a full month's worth, essentially, of work that needs to be done that first meeting in January. You only have two, you only have two meetings, technically. So that first meeting in January is always a long one. Um, we try to limit uh, as much of these presentations as possible. I mean, we think it's probably prudent for anything that involves money, anything that involves staff. I mean, I, I would think y'all want to hear about that. Um, so we try to we try to bring those before y'all. We can definitely put those in the first ones uh, and try to push to keep them there uh, as much as possible. Um, we'll, I'm, I'm willing to take whatever direction the board gives me. To, to we have some vacation on the sixteenth. Well, we'll, we'll maybe we can do storm water another time. We'll definitely get re that may be better. We do yeah. redevelopment commission and, yeah, and the fire. Okay. Yeah, um, we'll have better discussion more time. Okay, what else does the board want to discuss during this retreat? Anything else? Before we, I think we would like to have a closed session for just a little bit talking about some personnel matters. And um, I'm not sure of the exact uh, uh, section number that is as far as the uh, legal uh, end of it. But give me just a minute. to do that if you're ready to do that we can but if there's any other items that the board wants to discuss if you want to discuss the agenda makeup and how that's done I think the manager pretty much has uh, prior policy and that seems to be working unless anybody else has got any concerns about how things get on the agenda or don't get on the agenda etc. Uh, from my understanding it's just if you have a, another alderman it takes two aldermen to put something on the agenda. Is that still correct? Or am I, I think I misguided by that? The, the basis behind the way that has been working is based upon, um, it was based on the theory, I believe, of how one can call a special call meeting. So the, may, the way it works statutorily is the mayor can call a special call meeting at any time. Murders. For emergency purposes, emergency. or two aldermen can get together and call a special call meeting at any given time. The board, it's the board's meeting, 
staff takes direction from the board. If you want it to be three or four of y'all to get something on the agenda, then so be it. What we want to try to avoid is individual aldermen saying, hey, I want this on the agenda because then we're exactly going against exactly what you want to do, which is trying to expedite business uh, related stuff and having things that are on our agenda that, you know, one person may be, you know, extremely passionate about and the other six are like, why is this even on the agenda? We don't agree to it. So, well, the only thing I want to add to that is sometimes uh, an alderman might have something they have an interest in being on the agenda that has, they have not met with staff, particularly development services, that there might be a preclusion by what their, their end goal is. And so, you know, I always caution uh, aldermen and individuals that want something on to make sure that they've gone through the proper staff, if it's the electrical department, or sewer, or whatever, uh, to make sure that, that their goal uh, can be accomplished and that there's not something in the way they haven't gone over with staff before, before they then go to the alderman or the alderman goes to the manager to get that on the agenda. All right. So that, I, I get that. So let's, I'm using this as a for what instance, if, if I've met with staff, reviewed something, we look at it and I say I want to put it on the next agenda. Should staff then call and find the second agenda, to, uh, second alderman, or do I have to call the alderman and say, look, would you, because... I think, I think you should, because it puts the staff in a bad position. I see. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know to, um, you know, explain it to them or whatever. That's, that's no problem. And then I will you're say that the <laughs> staff will put business items on your agenda, and that's kind of why we send out the pre-agenda, should you have questions or concerns about just business items that need to get done, budget amendments road closures for, for races, stuff like that. We initiate those items for you because we know as far as running the city business, those need to be on there. I know one other thing we just, we've not discussed is, is our public relations, uh, the, the PIO in the city, the Facebook, the Twitter, oh, yeah, we do. the yeah, okay. um, yeah. channel, and you know, we're, we could do better. Definitely. And we've not discussed that. We we not really activated or unless somebody on the board is doing a better job than I am, uh, we we've not had any type of ad hoc um, communicate with the manager or staff as to where vision you know we want to go with our uh, public relations as far as. I would rather have I would, would rather have had a camera and Facebook live this meeting than video it for a later showing on. I think because it would have been live, in progress, ready to go. But you know, we need the camera, we need the setup, whatever that's going Facebook to be. Facebook Live is a feature yeah. in Facebook. You know, I understand, but we need to have a camera or whatever we've got to have. I mean, we're not going to individually use all our phones in the city, you know, even though Jamie does. <laughs> I, I just, I didn't want my constituents to sit through this yeah. <laughs> live. But, um, um, I'm sorry, to go ahead. Or YouTube. That I know we have. The, I'm sorry. The the um the Facebook that was started right. and I know um, we need to get guidance on that because um, on who would maintain it and you know what would be put up there just because you know people have asked and made comments so I, I took myself off as an admin just so I didn't want to be in until we know legally. I do want to be a little careful just like the facilitator mentioned yesterday about cyber security I really probably had not thought that through as far as things you, we have to be careful as a board what we are talking about on Facebook, Twitter, et cetera, that might be things that might breach um, city policy or whatever, our security. So again, though, that we, we do need to have staff involved in what we are doing. I guess you need to add something else to that list. So I mean, do we have, have a, a policy based on us personally and what we're, as me, Janisha Harris, and then as Alderman Harris, because that's why I have two pages. So anything that happens with the city, I put it on my alderman page, like if we're asking questions in the community, but me, as Jamisha, I'm, I'm my own entity, so I should be able to speak freely on any topic. Is that what you're saying? I think that what the board should instruct the alderman is, I mean the staff, is to what we want to see, and then the staff report back to us if there's any legal reasons right. why we should not do something. Right. I would love to. I guess the biggest you. concern is, is that, you know, that the board speaks as the board. No person should individually be speaking on behalf of the board. You should speak on behalf of Alderman Jamisha Harris or Harris, the, the personal person if you want to do that. Right. But nobody should speak on behalf of the board unless the board is to take action to make that their statement. Right. If anything is to come out as official as any kind of 
this is how I feel, blah, 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 unless right. you're responding to it on a personal matter right. or on your individual level. I, I will say if any of us speak in any method or venue or email or personal email or work email on city-related business that has public records laws associated with it. So there is a records. requirement to keep those Can't records it. for three to five years. Yeah. So just be conscious of that as to where you comment and do your work and comment on city business and stuff like that because that is public record. If you have to keep it three to five years, how can they do that? Because when I left office, Mine was immediately deleted, and I couldn't get any of my back emails on the public. Those are archived. They're archived. I asked, and they were not. Why not? That office. Well, they are I, now. I tried to get them, and they did. They, were. they definitely are now. Okay. That's, that's um, I, I did want to be uh, considerate of Chris has a long drive back. So, Mayor, if we if we may have more stuff to discuss, but do we uh, want anything else for him now? Thank you, Chris. We appreciate it. Thank you, you. Thank you so much. Right. Thank you. Wish you well. Thank you. Thank you. And if I need to help in the future, I'm happy to come back. I love your town. So, um, I can understand, like, if someone makes a comment on Facebook and we answer, are we not allowed to speak up and answer a question, or, or, or do I need to text Charlie and say, hey, can you answer this question? Well, I'm telling you what, what I'm a lot of times on questions are being asked. I forward a lot. I <laughs> good see. No hard feelings, I hope I'm oh, no. trying to keep y'all on track, Thank like herding cats yeah. sometimes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm forward to the man who yeah. like yeah. 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 and ask anybody who replies to the individual to send me a copy. Because so, okay. I do have to be careful, you know, I might say something that's legally not right. correct or whatever. I mean, well, we, I mean, that's, that's tough. <laughs> you have to do it, though. I mean, uh, I mean, well, you could have that little disclaimer. It's, it's my opinion. It's yeah. not the well, opinion yeah. expressed. You know, people have those things. But when I talked to Frida at the school, Frida at the school of governments, she had told me that we could have a board of aldermen page. We could put information up there. Say I could go on there and post and say all the roads in downtown are closed right now due to whatever, whatever, whatever. And that's perfectly okay. Now, if I go on there and say, you know. I need for you to vote today on this. You need to. That's a different story. Look, can I ask a question? Because I, I have a, I have an issue with that. Because I don't think we need a page, Facebook page, that is titled the Newer Board of Aldermen. Because the Newer Board of Aldermen is a body. It's an entity. When we make a decision, it takes four of us to make a decision. And I don't think we're going to ask every time somebody wants to post something on that page as an individual alderman, three other people. Is it okay if I post this on the page? I don't understand. We've got the city page. Probably how many? Followers, do we have uh, over 4,000? So we've got over 4,000 followers. I think that new page you've got is like 30 some people. Obviously, well, it's because we haven't done anything. Today. But I have an Alderman page, Jamie mm -hmm. has an Alderman page. I think you have one. Yeah, I'm I'm using my Why do we have to have this one page that is called the Newman Board of Alderman? Because I, I, it would I make a, it, it would make a, I've had requests from citizens because you may not friend that citizen, she may not friend that citizen, and that's what happens it, on It's not, it's, when you have a page in Facebook, it's not a friend. You like the page or you follow it. So you can't cut somebody off you that- You can block somebody. You can, you can block somebody. If they make inappropriate comments, I, mean, right. I think- I understood, I understood, but I'm just saying, like, I never get your page. I don't think I'm a friend on your page. I never see your page. I don't just, know anything. Just like it. That's all you have to Okay. Do. Well, I, of course, I'm technically, you know- But well, to all of point, you get into some sticky questions of whether y'all even need four agreements to post something on that page or for agreements to how to respond to something if you're speaking on behalf of the board of aldermen on a newborn board of aldermen page you start kind of crossing that line as to public meeting requirements and well I mean, can i ask that well, specific question and they said as again you know I guess I'd have to go to Colleen and say, look, um, downtown Newburn is doing this, or, or there's something going on. You know, I was communicating with my people during the storm. Now, they were sharing it to other people. If they had gone to the Newburn Board of Alderman page, basically all I was doing was cutting and pasting what Mark was sending out, or and, Matt, or whatever. We, we could direct staff, Mark, to have that information disseminated through Colleen. Okay. And Which I think we, that's but if you're on the city page. I think that's the appropriate way to do it. Because who's to say that? I don't agree with something you got on the page, and I start a the Newburn Board of Aldermen page, and Jamie says has one that has the Space Board of Aldermen. I mean, it's just I, I think when you have individual pages, we're branded as individual aldermen. I think you have over a thousand followers on your page, so you have more than probably all of us do. I, I just I, I'm not in favor of a page called the Newburn Board of Aldermen. 
and it speaks for all of us. I think we have the city page and we have our individual pages. Well, we need to bulk up the city page then and figure out then how we either can share that information to that or drive our people to that because, again, people want that information yeah. and they'll share it. And I think that's a good thing. They want a central page to know. Um, and the request came from somebody, uh, you know, I had a, um, a citizen who wasn't a friend of anybody and said, can you please just have some place where I can go? And I said, sure, good idea. And I did check with Freedom. So I had asked, I called the school. So I guess we just shoot the efforts to yep. the main patient. That's fine. We'll show that. If, if you want to afford me that information, I'd, I'd well, like I, that. I talked to her on the phone, but I'll get her to type yeah, it. We had a long yeah. discussion about yeah. several things I'm, on how to. I'm concerned about us at, at, on my own ultimate page because, like, if, like, you know, there's an issue that's going down with, you know, Trent Court where it's a possibility it's going to affect my ward. So if I ask a question, because I want people to follow me. Hey, how do you feel about Carolina Avenue? And you know, because that's it is public knowledge. Am I right? Am I not allowed to have this discussion within that my ward that is going to? That would be on your own. No. Page, correct? Trent Trent Court. Court. No. Oh, oh, the, oh, the oh, deal. Yeah. The, you know the the inner workings of it. I need to call a, a town meeting to say, hey, we need to discuss this specific. Am I not allowed to put that on my board or my my alderman page now? Oh, I can't. Okay. And if we want to create, I'm sure she would come down from the school of governments and talk to us. And, that would be good. Idea. You know, and have a little so we could be refreshed on the do's and don'ts of what you can do. I know that that um, Scott tells us, but I think having somebody there that we might control because Scott's going to say, "Let me check. Let me check." Here would be. Yes. Yeah. I, I want to say something to you about the same subject. I, I've watched, and I, I'm not. I'm not sure if I even know how to get to some of these pages, you know, to be honest with you. But I've watched because people will call me up and say, hey, you need to watch this. I watched your interviews with Orman, mm -hmm. you know. And I really do think that these interviews are great. But I wish that we would do stuff like that using our professional um, public information officer you know, as the person that's, that's doing the conducting the interview with, and, and that stuff be posted on our uh, City of Newburn page. I, I think the difference is you're, you're looking at opinions, and you're looking at different spin on things, then you're looking at what Colin does with This Week at City Hall is announcements and official things. But it doesn't have to be that. Place. I mean, it doesn't yeah. have to be, but... Okay. Yeah, but that allows the citizens to be involved with what's going on. I, I, I mean, I personally don't think our PIO and city staff needs to be an opinion opinion show, myself. That's my opinion. I think they need to stick to our job black and white facts. Here's the policy. They don't this is what we're reporting. You're not asking them what they think. You're just telling them what to right. tell you, what, what's going on. Well, I think that more of those type interviews with our public information officer putting the information out there it is it, it's, it's probably a, a good thing for us to do i mean if we've got something coming up in our ward that we would like the people to know about it and we schedule a, an interview with colleen to to put that interview on facebook i think it's a great idea well that's the thing it's not on we're not doing those interviews on Facebook right now. We're only doing them well, on we Channel 3, but we need to. We need to. I mean, you because we don't have enough people looking at Channel 3. Who watches Channel 3? Nobody. <laughs> if, if Channel 3 costs us money, I'd, I'd be in opinion to do If Channel 3 right costs us money, I'd give it up. Yeah, I would I would agree with you. Do you want to those money? Yeah. It's saying here. Right, yeah, I mean, $15,000? What's the best calling? Well, oh, can we do our vote? <laughs> well, if it's only fifteen thousand dollars a year, yeah, it might it's be. It's not a significant. That, I mean, that's that's probably worth the people because they do watch the board all of the meetings. Well, yeah. on YouTube. Yeah. Right. Well, if we if we spend a fifteen thousand, let's make it worth fifteen thousand. We need to boost it up. I mean, what? the pixels when I'm looking at it is it's dusty. Yeah, that's me. You know, it's just. We need to do a it's, lot of. It's a standard definition channel. They I'm, have not I'm, offered us I'm, a high definition channel for any amount of money. That I, I think some of the owner might have to leave just a little bit. So if you would, or if you'd like to have a closed session, I would okay. need a motion in a second. Did you get the statute? I did, uh, and I'll probably not read it as fast as Scott normally does. Okay. But pursuant to North Carolina General Statute Section One Forty Three Three Eighteen Eleven A Six to discuss personnel issues. I'd like to make a motion that we go into closed session. Second. 
Motion is second. Any discussion? All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All opposed, same.